Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast, go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. I was doing something and I forgot what I was doing. Hi, Dar. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Megan. How's it going? <laughs> nice, Beverly. Welcome. Happy Saturday, everybody. Um, it's a little bright here, huh? Sorry. Good to see you. Good to see you all. It is... Um, it's actually kind of cool here and it's because of all the smoke. So it's kind of weird. I was like, oh, do I get ice water? I actually got warm water to drink. <laughs> it's August and I'm like, it's kind of cold. It's 80 degrees. <clears throat> Hi Heidi, how's it going? Okay, so we are making the Peaks and Valley pants. Oh, I have a new graphic for you guys. Let me see if I can, um, hmm. Where is that? Let me see if I can add it. I have that one. No. Let me see. So, um, oh, thanks, Emily. That was really fun, wasn't it? Thanks so much for those of you who came to that Instagram live interview. Well, shoot, I made a new graphic. Um to make sure you guys were doing this only on PDFs, but I guess I didn't download it. I didn't replace this one. So, so that being said, um, Decades of Style gave you guys a coupon and it's 20% off any pattern on their website as long as it's PDF, um, except for the Peaks and Valley Pant, you can get print or PDF. So. It should, it should work now too, that she fixed it. There was something, just something silly with it. So, <laughs> hi Julia. Yeah, that interview was really fun. Neither one of us had ever done that before and I didn't know, like I didn't even know what to do. I was like, do I just need to sit here with the Instagram app open? Do I need to be in the, the messages? <laughs> it was kind of weird, but it was so easy, so. And I, I just joined her live. And you know how when you join someone's live, it'll say, ask to join this um, live video. I always thought that meant like, ask to be interviewed by this person or ask to be featured in one of their videos. And I was like, that's so crazy that they would just put that out there to everybody watching, you know? Now I realize it means like you're the, you know, then you ask to be, um, in it and they accept it and then you're part of the video. So anyway, nice Tammy, I'm glad. Hi Elena, how's it going? So um, I have a few things to really quickly announce because a lot of you know who are on my newsletter list or my Patreon 
that I've been trying to get rid of fabric and cut pieces and kits and things. And so I made them all like 50 cents or a dollar or free. And so I restocked some of the free stuff. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like in person, just in case people are like, I can't tell. And you have to pay shipping. So, you know, you might be paying $10 on it and you're like, why am I paying $10 on it? Well, not $10. I made them all under priority mail. So if you're domestic, it would be first class um, mail. If you add more things and you're going to get over into that priority amount. So I just tried to make the packages as big as possible without getting into that um, priority thing, you know. So let's see here. So I just randomly pulled a couple of the free pattern or free fabric things. And this set is a little bigger, so there's some pretty big pieces. Oh, this is these are these are small, but they're usually like this size. And there's all kinds of stuff in here, um, the unicorns. We always picked top designer fabrics, the BFF. Um, some rainbow piece, this bigger piece. This is a pretty big piece. Bees. People thought I didn't have any more of this. These are cut pieces, so they're like cut pattern pieces. So this is just a, a sample of one of them. So, yeah, and you can see I have, I still have a lot more in my hand right here. <laughs> I'm having trouble holding it. Um, so here, there's even some funny things like this. Like this one has like an elastic pocket and these really kooky fabrics, which are really cute. Um, this one doesn't show. One of a few of them have actual, like if you're a, a person who wants like to make like a tool case, some of the pockets are already sewn. Let me see if I can find one of those. All right, let's see if this one has one of those. No, this one's like this one. I'll find one of those for you guys. Cause they're kind of cool. Let's see, this one have it. I thought like so many of them have it. And of course the, the three or four that don't, I'm picking. Let's see. Here we go, here's one. Like this one. Well, hopefully I remember which one I just pulled that out. <laughs> like this one, see, it's got all the pockets. This was a double pointed needle case, so it's got two rows of pockets here. And they're in ascending sizes. So things like that. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in that bag so I don't put it in the wrong, back in the wrong one because they're all weighed. Yeah, you go here. Okay, cool. And then um, I also have, oh, just scrap vinyl for free. And these are all cut pieces as well. There's even some bound like flaps with pockets in them. They're free. And then stiffener, same thing. There's like big pieces of stiffener. There's like four of this piece here, three of this really gigantic one, and then some of these little narrower pieces. So if you have like things you wanna make, you know, Oh, awesome, Heidi, I'm glad. Yeah, you probably got one of the first ones. Hi, soap lady. Hi, Malin. <laughs> Oops. Um, and then lastly, I have um, the musettes. So the musettes were the, this product I made. And if you're a cyclist, you know what a musette is. It's this, this like very simple bag that cyclists wear. And I have a picture of me wearing one. And I'm not sure why we never finished these. I think we got involved in a really big project right afterward and people probably weren't, it was such a specific product too. Um, but the fabrics we used were so good. There were all these Japanese cotton, things you'll probably recognize that are totally out of print. Um, and they're just ready to be finished. So there's those as well. And I have those if anyone wants to see them, I brought them over here. So anyway, it's not like I'm trying to make money. It's all like free and all the project bag and pocket bucket kits are 50 cents or a dollar. So um, 
have at it. <laughs> I'm still needing to just like get rid of some of this stuff too because um, of the factory. So, but this is it. This is the last haul. I think I have one more, one or two more small bags and I just can't decide. I sit there and I get there. I'm like, do I just, do I make this into a pattern and sell it like double doubles? I had so many double doubles and people loved this bag that I was just really torn. I was like, oh, I could make these into kits and just give them away. Like I have tons of them where the pocket is bound, the top is made. All you need to do is put it all together in the bag, just bind it. And um, I just, I don't have that pattern really. So I really can't do that to you guys. So the other one I have is Charm Keepers. I have a ton of Charm Keepers. I'll probably make that scrap fabric and clear wristlets. So those are my last two. Charm Keepers and clear wristlets. So it's just so much work. I, I This is like full time. Doing the stream is just full time for me. So. Anyway, if you guys are interested, go for it. It's on there. there you go to my website, soso.live, and there's a sale tab at the far left. Really easy. That's all, that's all the stuff that's dirt cheap. There's other stuff for sale on my site, like two-inch webbing if you have the wallaby pattern. And I put the um, khaki color, which is like an um, olive green. I put that half off because I actually accidentally have far more than I needed of that because it got sent to me by accident. Um, I ordered it by accident. They didn't send it to me by accident. I ordered that color by accident. And then, um, and we had used it and it was great, but then I didn't have a use for it. That happens. Um, oh, and zipper. I have some zipper by the yard. I think that's about it. So after all this is done, all I'll have are patterns and the zipper and the webbing, and I'm fine with that. Because <laughs> I'd really like to someday sell binding, and I really thought I'd be doing that this summer, but I didn't know I'd be moving. So anyway, I'm just trying to like... Give it, give it to good homes. You could you could buy it and donate it to somebody you know who does you know charity quilts or whatever. So um, ship it right to them if you want. Um, okay, so we're doing these peaks and valley pants. As you guys know, I made myself some shorts. I have I just brought them in here. I have a lot of things that I want to try here. Um, and so these are the pair I made, and I put little quails on the butts. I sound like I have more than one butt. So this is a pull on style pant or short. Maybe I need to pull up a little more today because of the, the graphic. Maybe I'll move the graphic over. I know some of you like it when my um, face is on the right hand side. Oh, magic tricks by Sarah me. There, we don't use that area. Oh, yeah, she was, right, Margie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's really sweet. She's so enthusiastic. She's really fun. Oh, shoot. And um, anyway, so we're doing this pant in short, Peaks and Valley Pants by Decades of Style. And it's a stretch woven fabric, but a pull on style. So no button closure, no zipper closure. Um, you, you do, you put elastic in the casing and I'm going to try two different styles of sewing the casing. So these are my, my, uh, pair. And then I did some fitting on when I cut them where I left the top one size and I graded down to the size below for the lower part, just to, as a demonstration, because I wanted mine to fit that way. So I haven't tried them that way. So we're going to do that. So I'm making the pant version and this leaf print is my contrast for the peak and valley. So this is what they look like. So my leaf print will be this little peak and valley. And then I have this rust colored cotton, stretch cotton rip stop for the body. And then I'm also using self for the pockets in the waistband. I'm not using any contrast. So, so one thing I had planned to do in the cutting when we got together was to make a tummy panel between the pockets because I thought, you know, these are such a smooth and slim fitting pant that I think that, I mean, I will speak for myself. I had a lot of, and have a lot of, I was definitely a little like, that's really gonna show off my belly, you know? And um, I'm very self-conscious of that. That's like my, that's my area that I'm very self-conscious of. And I thought, well, I wonder what I could do to smooth it without going overboard. And I was thinking about putting a tummy panel, which is just like a piece of fabric across that's connected by the hand pockets. And I totally forgot to do that. And then I remembered this morning, 
Isn't that weird how you can be like, this is what I'm gonna do. I don't write it down, it's just out of my head sometimes. So I made one today and I wanna show you how I did that. I have all this stuff here, but I think we're going to put this in here. I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I'm gonna try just a panel. It's a little bright, I know, sorry. So you're gonna need your front pattern piece here, right? I'll just dark it a little, darken it a little bit. Don't, we wish we had an automatic button for this because I do this so much. Okay, so you need your front and you're gonna need both your pocket pieces, all right? So now I feel like there's two ways you could do this. You could make this all in one and that's what originally I wanted to do. I kind of wanted to make it so that this tummy panel connected all the way across to the other pocket so that you would put it on the fold right here across the center front and then you would have um, your lining and your um, under pocket cut on the fold right here. And I think you could do that if you wanted a really nice smooth, you know, finish there in all this piece to be one. And you know, you're gonna take your pattern piece, line it up there, and then you need a nice curve here to blend it, especially if you're gonna use your serger. So make sure that you kind of blend this in. And then you wanna go to the seam line. So find your size, 5 eighths inch in on the, the uh, seam line, then that's where your line is gonna be. Now I did one more thing. I actually, because I'm using stretch fabric, which is required for this, I made it so that I swung this lower anchor point here toward the body of the garment about a quarter of an inch so that it's smaller across right through here. So I kind of pivoted out, you know, a little bit right here. That way it would press on my tummy and the pants would hang a little bit freer so here's the tummy panel and my pants we could hang um, across it. And it, we're not talking about a lot, like I took out a half inch total, you know, across right here at the bottom. Now up here I didn't take any out because it needs to meet the waistline anyway, right? We're gonna put that in the seam. So you can do it this way. Now I actually don't have enough fabric of the poplin, this the print for my lining to do this pattern, or no, I have enough of that. Do I? I don't even know if I have enough of that. I don't have enough of the denim, denim anymore. Or the, um, no, I'm not using denim. Wow, I could have done this. For some reason, I was thinking I was doing this in the denim, I cut the shorts. Oh, I could have done this on the fo fold. Well, that's so funny that I totally spaced what I cut these out in. Well, anyway, that way would be really easy to do. Um, I'm gonna do it a little differently. So I cut out a separate tummy panel and it's this piece right here, or it's actually, yeah, like this. And I don't need this little blending area here because I'm gonna sew this as one and it's gonna go across the front of my pants like this. And it's going to, you know, sew in, oops, sew into this seam of the pocket here. So this way it takes a little bit less fabric and I could do it after the fact, right? Cause I completely forgot that this is what I wanted to do. So we're gonna do it this way. Um, I also chose the only the lining. It's a little lighter weight than the ripstop cause I felt like that that would take up less room. I don't wanna add to the tummy. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> that's my plan. I completely forgot I did have enough fabric of the ripstop, but oh well, that'll be okay. So I just wanted to give you that little kind of rough tutorial on how to add that and then I'm going to show you how to sew it but um, it's not going to be hard if you do it connected to you need it on both by the way if you you could do it with one layer but it's a little more tricky to explain how to sew it and I'm not going to talk about that today but um, if you do it where it's on the fold here at the center front and connected to your pocket do that for your um, your this pocket the piece that's called front pocket and for the lining you you need both to do that. All right, and then you'll sew this as one. You're gonna sew these pockets together, kind of finish them, and then attach them to your pants. That's pretty much the difference, all right? So the way I'm gonna do it's gonna be a little different. All right, so that's one little thing, because I always make my projects a little more complicated, right? <laughs> 
All right, so let's, um, I'm gonna leave the brightness there for now. I'm just gonna leave this pulled up. That's what I should do. I just leave this pulled up, right? Hi, Amy, how's it going? Yeah. Oh, nice, Tammy, I'm glad. Cool. Hi, Libby, how's it going? All right, so, speaking of Libby, for my back pockets, I think what I'm gonna do, let me find them. They're actually kind of buried because I have my stuff in the order of how I'm gonna sew them. Because like I did the quail on the jean shorts, I think I'm gonna do something on the back pocket of these as well. I have this nice um, off-white top stitch thread that I recently bought kind of just to have because I really like, I like white top stitch. It's a little risky, right? Like I feel like light color top stitches, you're just like, eek, you know, like you're gonna see every like little discrepancy, but I think um, it looks so nice when it's nice. So I think I'm gonna do a little top stitch detail here. And so what I was thinking is kind of taking the motif of the pant, let's put that there. And I have my pocket, so I'm gonna use, oh, where's that little soapstone pencil thingy? Please don't tell me I lost it. I am totally falling in love with that thing. Where is it? Well, shoot, I don't see it. I'm gonna kinda draw about, like this is, maybe we could just, I'll iron it. That's what I'll do, I'll iron it. Cause I'm gonna try and do this where this is, I only have to do very few thread changes. So Libby gave me the idea recently of doing continuous line drawings for the pockets and that's how I did the quail. So shout out to Libby. And then um, I'm just gonna use a scrap vellum, I think, and just trace something, trace something off the fabric. I don't know, something that kind of resembles what's going on here. I don't know what the heck is going on on here, but <laughs> maybe, uh, Maybe like this right here. Cause I think, I think this piece of paper is big enough, you know, to do something. Don't you think? I could just get another piece, huh? Uh, Cause you could do it in the computer, right? But I don't really have time for that. Let's do that, this one right here. Let's do this right here. And I'm gonna try and keep it within the bounds of the hem of the pocket, which is like right here. Like that, right? I could be more, you know, planned if I set this up a little better. So let's just draw it on here. I'm going to be kind of messy because I'm gonna be doing the machine anyway. It won't even matter, you know what I mean? Like, this is what I've learned. <laughs> I'm way above where I need to be. I got a little out of control. Uh. Okay, something like that. And then we'll just add something here, like maybe, I don't like that. Okay, is that too much? Do we think that's too much? That's a little, let, maybe I'll just do this right here. Right? Yeah, I think I'll just do this right here. So this is vellum. I have a bunch of it from um, this one quilt project that I did. So I figured this might work really good and this you can tear it away and you can stitch right through your paper. That's my plan. <laughs> All right, so I have one other little scrap here and we'll just do like something, maybe more like this right here. I'm, I'm willing, I'm, I'm happy to take suggestions too.
All right. They look kind of like underwater things, don't they? <laughs> what do we think of that? <laughs> It'll look better stitched, right? Okay, <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Um, let's, maybe I could hem my pockets first. Cause we, you know how we've gotten into a pickle before with, um, I stitch, I have to end up stitching through and I don't like that. So let me, I'm gonna overlock the top of these. And then we'll, um, we'll stitch those. And watch, the stitching of these pockets will take longer than the whole pants. <laughs> It'll be fast though, I promise. So um, just in case there's some new folks here, um, welcome. So live streams are a little different than, you know, say an uploaded video, but they're different in a really great way where you can, you know, ask questions, you can make suggestions, you can challenge me on whatever I'm doing. I'm, I welcome everything. Um, everybody is welcome here no matter what ability you are or what size you are. We are all those people here. And let's see, what else? If you wanna chat with us, we really love that. You need to be logged into YouTube. And if you're like, oh, I didn't even know I had could do that. It's asking me to create a channel. That's just their name for an account. You know, so you can create an account, which is called a channel. And then you can chat with us. If you're watching this and it's up, oh, I just switched. You guys, I was gonna hem this first. What the heck, Sarami? Wow, I'm just going to pin this so that I, I can see where it'll be, you know? So, um, hi Lydia, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> you like that, Megan? Yeah, so we like, you, we like it if you can chat with us. If you're watching this uploaded, um, at the beginning of the video, I give you lots of ways to make it a faster playback. So I, I would definitely explore that if you're like, oof, this live stream thing. When you're not live and in the moment, it can take a little while. Yeah, right, Libby? Exactly. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was using my awl, too, to kind of pick it out. All right, so let's see how this looks. All right, and then what else? What, do we, what else do we want to tell new, new folks? Um, in the description, there's usually, once the project is done, there's gonna be a link to a place on my website. And all it is, it's not a, it's not a ploy to get you to my website because I really don't sell much on there. It's just a place to kind of house all of the de details for a project. So if you're like, I'm on YouTube and it says there's a part two of this video when she sewed part one, but I can't find it. If you look in the description, there's gonna be a link to the project and it'll tell you, you know, it's a really short list of details. Um, like what size I made, what fabric I used, what modifications I did. And then it has every link to every video associated with the project, cutting, fitting, sewing, and all that. Below that is usually my more candid personal sentence about the project, what I would do ne differently next time, <clears throat> or how much I loved it or whatever. So that's the greatest spot to look for the um, information you might be looking for about the project. All right, so let's... This leaf is kind of chunky, you know? Do we want those? I think I want this right here, though. I knew these scraps of vellum would come in handy. <laughs> I hope this looks good. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll just pin it once. Once we get it sewing on there, it'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna warn you, uh, my machine, when it goes up and down the, the this, 
it's going to be really annoying for some folks, depending on if you're wearing headphones or whatever. So you can just mute me while I'm doing this. Um, I totally understand. All right. And we're going to start all the way at the bottom so we don't have to worry about our back stitch. You should have heard the quail. I was really glad that most people in this building are gone for the day. I actually think people would have been like, what the heck are you doing in here? My experience with this, if you're not doing a really like detailed thing is you can kind of be loosey goosey and it, it looks good no matter what. Just ima imagine how good it would look if I actually put a lot of effort into it, you know? I think about that, but then I'm all of a sudden live and I forgot to prepare for that. This reminds me really a lot of drawing on Procreate. I don't know why. All right, do we think we'll need something over here to balance it out? Nah. <laughs> uh, hey, Terry, how's it going? Ooh, nice, you got goodies. All right, so yeah, like Libby said, this is the kind of the worst part. And I do find that um, you can kind of hurt your stitches too if you're a little too aggressive with it. But you're usually not live on camera and in a hurry, so you got this, you know. And let's see how it looks. Yeah, doing the, the, the uh, quail was so small and tight and areas and detailed. This took me forever as part. So what are you guys working on? Entertain us. Let us know. I cut out a uh, blue A uh, top, which, you know, remember I made that blue A dress? Um, I cut a top version out yesterday, or uh, maybe it was Wednesday. No, I don't know when it was, whenever, um, to go with these. I think I'm going to record me sewing it as an ASMR since I've sewn that as a dress. Oh, that's a great idea, Libby. I actually like that. I, I like that, too. I think that that was one thing about the like the the uh, quail that really brought it together. Because I've done that before on others, and I didn't get it quite right. You know, like I didn't get that line. I don't know. It just looked out of place. It makes a big difference. It's worth getting it like straight. <laughs> Knit and tee. Ooh, that sounds nice. My iron recommendation. Oh, you mean like what iron I use? Hi, Blair. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> um, my iron. Well, you know what? I use a, a basic Rowenta I, get, I got from Target. 
Like, I, I know there's really nice irons out there, and I haven't gotten to try a lot of the ones you see people raving about in social media, like the Aliso. Um, I've used really nice irons and worked places where we had like really fancy ones like Gravity Feed and stuff like that. And they're really great. Uh, but I just bought an $80 one from Target. It's probably the most expensive one that they have. It's a Rowenta. And I will say that what I look for as a Garmin sewist and an iron is something that's really heavy, um, has really great steam. And I really like that um, point to be as you know pointy as possible. And that's about it. There's, you can spend a lot on an iron and, and it does, it is really great. But I think you can get a pretty nice iron without spending a lot. You know what I'm seeing is there's um, dirt on my thread. I can't tell if it's the graphite from the pencil. That would wash out, right? I'll show you in just a second, if you, maybe you can see it. Okay, so you see a few of these little stitches that are loosey-goosey. I, I like to, I come back here and I kind of fix them. But can you see? Look at the, that they're dirty. What the heck? What the heck? If you need to like walk, you can walk this all the way down too. Now if you need to do your back stitch in the middle, like you want a design that doesn't go down into down here, what I recommend is um, leaving really long tails and not doing a back stitch and then just give it a little tug like this. Wait a minute, let me get rid of whatever this thread is. What is that thread? Okay, if you give this a little tug like this, you can see I can pull the top thread to the back like this. And if I had a really long tail, I could just hand tie it and you could hand tie it. And then you don't have a back stitch at all. It's very nice. Let's see if I can get rid of some of this slack. Really? Oh, that's so smart at Libby. Oil? No, I think it's the pencil. That's so funny. I didn't have that problem with the quail. And I think that's because the quail um, I printed in the computer. These stitches right here look a little tight, so I'm just going to kind of evenly distribute some of this. I'll probably fuss with this off camera a little bit more. This is partly my tension, partly because I'm using this heavier thread, partly because I'm speeding. <laughs> But that'll look pretty cute. It's not very, it doesn't very, it doesn't show up very much. I think that um, I've had better luck when I use two strands of regular thread rather than the top stitch thread. Oh, neat, Terry. It hisses just like mine. <laughs> That's the steam. <laughs> Printing assembling patterns, trying to decide. Oh, that's a creative part of the sewing. You had a bit of nice fabric with your squeezing out an Ogden cami. Now, I need to make some of those. People love that pattern and use it a lot. You just use that ribbon press to put the finish on the last pair of <gasps> Oh. Hi, Penny. Oh, uh, I have a, a video on that, Penny, um, on how to print a PDF pattern. And I mentioned PDF plotting. And I show how to use PDF plotting. And what's the other one people like? Pattern Z. I thought PDF plotting was a lot easier. Mostly finished the, oh, the cargo shorts. The pockets are an odyssey. I love that. <laughs> Watching you on TV with the hubby. Hello. <laughs> I love being on the TV. Eek. You finished with the LOD and a double got, oh, ooh. that sounds nice. Your, oh, your machine's at the spa. Wish we could all be so lucky as your machine. Hope your machine will be back and ready for action. <laughs> oh, interesting, Elena. Hmm. 
I did, Beverly. I actually, you know, I think someone else said that, and I think it was um, Christy said that. She preferred FOE, and I, I was kind of surprised. And then I, I actually, I agree. It's softer on my legs. It's not like the Pico is, like, terrible or anything, but um, I do like the FOE better. And it is really fast to sew. It does seem a little fiddly, but when you stretch out your fabric and you have that fold over elastic, it kind of goes inside there. It'll be a little fiddly sometimes, but it's one shot. Like you don't have to do it once, which is really nice too. Okay, let's do this one here. So, oh yeah, I'll show you my little trick. So this, on my machine, because it has the automatic thread cutter, I have to actually go in here, and I always forget to do this, and pull a ta tail on my bobbin. Otherwise it's too short. I almost, yeah, I kind of screwed myself on, on the one aspect of the quail the other day. So no back stitch. I'm really kind of Doing this a little quicker than I normally would, I will admit. This is, it's moments like this where I feel like some uh, veteran was be like, oh my God, I sew better than her. <laughs> yeah, you do right now, because I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, not taking very much care. <laughs> I can't imagine sewing something like like w uh, having all the time in the world and um, really putting out my best effort. I haven't done that in a really long time. Sorry, I know it's really loud. There we go. Nice smooth section. These are kind of weird. They look a little space-ish. Let's put a little bit of a Let's bring them out a little bit and let's put a little bit of a point. Don't not do this kind of thing because you're afraid of messing up. You can always take it out. It's not permanent, you know? All right, here we are at the back at the beginning and I have to leave a long tail again. And now I can just, oh, I love it when that happens. Come on, too long of a tail, then you get it all tangled up there. I can just pull, give it a nice little tug, the bobbin. Give the bobbin a nice little tug. And then I could just pull my top thread to the back. And then we can just tie it off. And this is inside the pocket. It's really not going to be an issue. So grab, there we go. Grab two and two. What's going on there? What is that? Did I have a skip stitch? Is that what that is? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you can, uh, I don't know where you live, Penny. You could do um, Staples does it, um, and FedEx Kinko's does it. I, I do, I use a local printer, I will admit. Um, I use someone local. It costs me a little bit more, but I don't have to pay for shipping, and it's really nice. They will only print the sizes that I want, and that, I think that's worth it, especially because when I'm on camera and I'm trying to find the sizes, it just makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see, easier for me to see, so it's a little worth it. So, so did you find, ow, I have a piece of paper stuck in there and that kind of hurt. Did you find something for your Liberty? Is that, isn't that what you were looking for? Oh, stop, stop stretching the stitches out, Sammy. I got longer pins. They're just not thick enough. <laughs> I, 
I'm like, look at it, thicknesses of pins and stuff. Like, God, I'm not that much of a sewing nerd. I didn't think, you know. All right, now, the next we're gonna start sewing the pants. Woo, woo, that's what you're here for, right? That and any time I use my seam ripper. <laughs> I know you guys. <laughs> I am hope like pressing all my stitches, you know. You know what I don't have for today though? I don't have um, a, a safety pin. So you're gonna see my extremely unique way of threading elastic in a waistband when I don't have a safety pin. I'm not gonna do it because there's a, a way I could do it where I could just sew the elastic in there as I go. I think that that's pretty hard for a lot of folks to do. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. I'll, I'll do it where you thread it through, but I have to use a, a bobby pin to do it. It's not, it's not my ideal. I, I don't know how many sewists don't have a safety pin in their studio, but you know me and I don't have one and I don't know why. It's just it's not something. I even searched through all the desk drawers out there in the abandoned lobby of this office building, thinking there's got to be one in here. I found about 20 Christmas CDs and 10 of them were the exact same Christmas CD. Oh, the mysteries of things you find like that. It's so weird. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with this thread. I, I wanted something a little bit more to stand out, you know? I, I don't mind it uh, being a little subtle for this project though, but you know what I mean. Like the Dawn jeans, we use two strands of regular thread. Oh, there you go. That's a good tip. Yeah, look at this funny thing here. I think my um, machine skipped a stitch. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. It's just not, it's not great. This is, this is kind of the worst top stitching on a back pocket I think I've ever done. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm going to restitch it. Like, what is that? I don't even know what that is. Ooh, does some, I feel like someone does use a projector here, Amy. <laughs> do you, I mean, I guess what I would do is weigh the pros and cons is buying, like getting your patterns printed maybe professionally a little cheaper? Like how many projectors, you know, would it take for that? I mean, uh, how many PDFs would it take to, to buy your projector? Don't you have to mount it to the ceiling too? I have, uh, Lynn. That'd be a, probably a good idea. I don't know, this feels, this just feels very thick. Oh, there you go, Penny. All right, I'm going to lay these threads across like this and um, try and stitch over them.
Ooh, I'm kind of having some doubts right now. <laughs> I can tie this. I don't have fabric glue, but I feel like this is a good instance where maybe I would consider using it, you know? I think I'm just not gonna worry about this right now. Okay, what's my backup plans? Like, okay, say uh, my pocket starts coming out and done. I could always take it off and re-sew a new pocket, right? Oh, I thought I pulled these to the back. Oh my God. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. There is a Facebook group um, for projector. Uh, this is, this is like, I gotta take this out. <clears throat> Um, and there, I think you could probably find a hashtag on, um, Instagram. So the embroider will hold, that's a good idea. I'm really failing at this right now. And I really am just, because I'm rushing, which is always never, ever a good idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to take this out back to here. So I have a tail to tie off to. That's what I needed to do. Don't cut the tail, don't cut the tail. There you go. And now I'm going to pull these to the back like I should have done the first time. Let's tie these off. The pencil on my um, thread is so annoying. <laughs> I didn't expect that. So maybe I would use a um, pin next time. I didn't think my pin would stick on the vellum, but I'm probably wrong. I mean, printer ink does, right? And it wasn't a problem. All right, let's do this again now. Make sure we have a nice long tail. There we go. I don't know what I'm drawing now. Look at how much whiter it is than everything. Oh my God. The pencil better come out. Maybe that's why it's not showing up very much is because of the pencil, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, Minimalist Machinist. I haven't seen her do any in a while, but I, I, uh, I just don't think I'm seeing everybody's posts anymore. I follow so many folks. <laughs> needle and the bell. There you go. There you go. That'll work, Amy. Okay. Let's give this a good little haircut. Not the best example of doing some stitching on your back pocket though, eh? All right, so I don't think I'm gonna do a contrast stitching on my whole pants, but I'm really tempted to. You know, like uh, my pockets onto the thing, all my top stitching. I mean, what do we think? Do we like the white? This would be kind of cute. You know, maybe I should. What do you guys think? Matching stitching on my pants or white? Where would I do the white? I think I would do the white on the perimeter of this pocket, the top stitch of the front pocket, the top stitch of the fly, or the rise, and that's about it. That's a good idea, Tammy. I just had vellum, you know? 
Hi, Angela. How's it going? Yeah, she does some, um, we aren't the most technical. Yeah. yeah, you like the white? Yeah, that, oh, right. is that true, Elena? That's interesting. All right, let's go for the white. I like the idea as well. So got my pins. Him in the pockets. The pins are kind of throwing me off. I don't usually pin that, and they they were kind of throwing me off visually. I was going somewhere else. <laughs> All right, Trevor back pocket sewn. It's okay. It does look a little bit like the fabric. <laughs> All right, so let's get um, back on track with the steps in the order that they are. So I have my fronts and my pockets out. And maybe I'll sew this. Maybe I'll switch to a cream thread then. Because I don't mind the cream thread on the, on the inside. Man, I made sure I had enough orange bobbins too since I only have one spool of orange thread. Nice, Malin. That's awesome. I'm glad she's, uh, you guys are liking it. She's getting some sales. All right, so I have this little tummy panel. So I do need to think about how to go about it. Let's see. So I'm going to finish the bottom edge of this tummy panel. I'm just gonna sew it right sides together. And I think that this is the bottom edge right here, yeah. So I'm gonna sew this with a five eighths inch seam. I almost interfaced this, but it's kind of an experiment. I do have knit interfacing that could have like allowed for a little bit of stretch, you know? I'm gonna trim the seam allowance down a little bit. Why not clip it? A little bit of a curve. We really want this to lay flat and not show. And let's go iron it. I think this is the first true tummy panel I've done. Like I made this specific, it goes across the, you know, front of the pants, you know. Iron this. It's nice and clean. Now, I feel like actually this would be less, um, would show less through the pants, just doing a raw edge and a straight stitch. All my favorite pockets in my garments have uh, no surging around them and they don't fray. In fact, my Reynolds dress that I made recently, I'm really tempted to go back and take out the surging stitch because the pot, the, for some reason, I feel like that that dress, the side seams are a little bit like towards the back of me. It's, it's very subtle. I can't t quite tell if that's what's going on, but the pockets feel kind of bulky right there. 
And I'm thinking that must be what it is. They're just kind of sitting back on my, my hip, you know? So that means that because they're kind of sitting back here a little, it's not like they really are, like it's really hard to tell. It's just that opening looks like it's sitting in kind of a odd spot and they're really thick, you know? All right, so let me think about this. I want, well, it doesn't really matter because you can't see, you're only gonna see this on the inside because let's, let's get a point of reference here. So here is the shorts version that I made this week. And I usually really like my, my pockets to show the print, to show on the inside of the garment. But you can see because this pocket's only two layers and there's no po true pocket facing, it's just the under pocket and the top pocket. It's the under pocket that shows, because look, you can't even see that my pockets have a contrast lining. So this right here is gonna be this leaf print here. I think it's good just kind of get a point of reference. And so this is the tummy panel. It's gonna sit right here like this across. That gives you a, a better point of reference. And um, so what I need to do is just stick it inside this seam here. Oh, that's true, Beverly. Thank you. That would be a fun one to do, you know? All right, so let's line this up here. You're gonna put it right sides together. Mine looks wrong sides, and that is because uh, I want this fabric to be on, showing on the inside of the pant, if you could see it, you know what I mean? Like. No one can, but I still like it that way. I'm going to trim this close and then I'm going to enclose the seam allowance, kind of like a French seam. Now let's do the other side. Don't you love it when I lose a pattern piece? Did I just sew these two to, no? Where is it? Oh, I bet it's under here. Here it is, okay. Ways to go crazy. how to bookmark it. Oh, here, um, you know what, Beverly? There is actually an extension, a Google extension you can get to bookmark um, videos. The other thing you can do is you can leave a comment on the video and the time. Just write it in the format where it's um, minutes, colon, seconds, that kind of thing or hours, minutes, colon, uh, hours, colon, minutes, colon, seconds. And then you can, it'll show up as a little link and then every time you go to this video, you can click on it and it'll take you right there. All right, so we have this right sides together. Five eighths inch seam allowance. Oh man, it feels so big. I think that because this is a stretch woven, I'm, I would probably prefer 3 eighths. Let's make sure it actually is 5 eighths, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I double checked that before, but I just had a panic attack. <laughs> Nothing like making a prototype of your project, making all your fit adjustments and then sewing it at the wrong seam allowance when you go to do your final one. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. Exactly, Michelle. You can do a special playlist too. All right, so let's um, iron these. I'm going to clip these curves. Yeah, there's lots of ways you can do. I like to, I do save the other videos, like how to's and things, especially mine are all like how to do YouTube um, stuff, you know, or uh, yeah, just like how to do YouTube stuff. And um, you can hide the playlist too. So you can tell when people don't hide their playlists. You can make private ones and then that way it's just yours. It's kind of funny because if you, sh if you save videos to a playlist and you have a YouTube, you know, channel, you know, account, it'll show up. Those videos will show up on your account. Like if I went to, you know, your YouTube channel, clicked your name or whatever, it would show me all the videos you've saved if you don't make them private. Just so you guys know that. I don't do that. I've clicked on people's names by accident when I was trying to see their comment and reply to it. And then I accidentally was like clicking their name and not the comment. And then I'm like, oh, that's cool. This person does, likes makeup videos or whatever, you know. But if you have like videos you just want your family to see, you gotta make that stuff private. All right, so let's just iron this. Wait, did I do my pockets wrong again? I did, didn't I? Wait, how did I do that wrong? Didn't I just do this so that this was the... I put that like, oh my God. I will never get that right. I've been sewing for 35 years. I've been sewing pockets for 35 years. That is far more than half my life. And I will still get what is the right side and what is the wrong side of a pocket wrong on what I want it to be, you know? It's not going to matter here because no one can see these, but it's still the principle of the matter. It just drives me nuts. All right, so this is my pocket with tummy panel. All right, Elena. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> that sounds fun though. Have fun. All right, so. You don't have to do this. I like to do this because I want to encase the seam allowances in there. I probably should have clipped that a little bit more. makes it a nicer finish. That felt weird. It's kind of an awkward little thing, you know, with this little tummy panel kind of flopping around. I think it's this uh, thread too. It's acting a little funny. Hmm. Sounds funny. All right, so these are my pockets. All right, now let's attach them to our fronts. And we're going to sew them right sides together with the diagonal pocket opening here, which is so funny that that, I'm still a little bamboozled by <laughs> that I got that wrong again. <laughs> this is normally how most people like it. They like it so that the, um, you know, the inside of the pocket is the right side. So it's not like I did this wrong, but it's not how I was expecting. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get that right. All right, so we're gonna do this at a five eighths inch seam as well. And 
it is a little bit awkward now that I have my pocket on there first. You don't have, you could do this first. Um, but you know, since I added this little tummy panel, so if you didn't add the tummy panel, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna sew this right sides together at the pocket opening. The piece that kind of matches that little angle, which is uh, I think, think called the uh, pocket lining, pretty sure. And then we'll do this one here. And it's funny too, because our pants aren't connected yet because you don't do that step quite yet. So I think I finally got past my block with this laundry basket. So I've been working on this laundry basket pattern for a while and I don't know <clears throat> why it's becoming this epic project. It was just a free pattern I was gonna give my Patreon like the middle tier and the top tier folks, right? And I still am. Um, and then a few people were like, that's a pretty cool pattern. I was like, okay, cool. Well, maybe I'll just do it right. I mean, I'm not gonna like hire the graphic artist and all that. I'm just going to you know, do this myself like I do occasionally. I am a trained pattern drafter, so that part's not the hard part for me. It's like the formatting and making sure it's all going to be the way I want it to, right? And so, <clears throat> hi, Ray. Oh, I could, well, I could if I had allowed that amount, but that would be really cute. Look at that. Oh, here, here. That would look really cute, a little splash. I mean, in the pattern, this is, this would be the contrast, so it would be this fabric. A bit of fake binding, that would be really cute. I don't want too much, you know, stuff like that, because I'm already, I'm already a little nervous about how the bottom's going to look. So... I started like, and I realized when I was making this pattern, I was like, you know what? This reminds me of this pattern I drafted years ago. And I actually had it here in the studio. I don't think that I had the pattern, but I had the, the sewn bag. And I was like, yeah, this bag, this is exactly what I want. So let's redraft it because this is easier to sew and there's no circle involved. No problem, easy peasy, redrafted it, re-sewed it, per turned out perfect, great. Then I go to record the video and it, and it ends up being this like epic long video. And I'm like, why is this such an epic long video? And I, and I remember that I was feeling a little stressed when I had to record it because I made one for Cricut as a going away gift. And I wanted to make sure that I could give it to her before she left. So I needed to finish the video before she left and we were like in the throes of trying to get ready, you know, all that. And I also remember my air conditioning was terrible that day and it was really, really warm in here. And so I feel like I, I was just a little bit like fatigued or something in the video. And so that, I, I think because I know that, <laughs> That's how the video feels. So I'm almost done editing that video. And I just finally decided that I'm gonna give myself a little grace and I'm not going to. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the pattern and then I'm gonna do a live stream sew along. I'm gonna do a cutting video and a, li and a live sewing video and that's gonna be the video. <laughs> And maybe I'll add timestamps. And that, that made me feel a lot less stressed about it because it's not a pattern <laughs> I'm gonna make any money on and I don't do it for the money, right? So why am I making it stressed, myself stressed out about a silly laundry basket pattern, which I love. My family actually loves this thing now. Even my daughter, she at first was like, that's kind of weird, like the basket's so nice. And then she was like, I love this thing. I'm not gonna take the basket. And I was so excited because she didn't know I was making her one. And she was like, will you make me one? And I had made her two, which now I don't even have. I gave to her. I don't even have because I gave to her. So that's another weird thing about this pattern is that I don't even have the actual samples. Like I can't even do photography. So it's a whole thing. I just was in a way rushed, even though it took me too long. So, 
All right, so I just top stitched the opening there. I'm not doing a very good tutorial. There we go. Do we like that? Ooh, I don't know. This is like really orange. I'm gonna dial down the sharpness or the saturation a little bit. You are, right? <laughs> You're just saying that to be nice. <laughs> I do love it though. Like I really love the pattern. I think this looks nicer without the white top stitching. What do you guys think? Your fronts are probably separate. You didn't probably add the top tummy panel. What do you guys think? Oh, page protectors. I didn't Beverly because I did a small format. All right. I think uh, the white top stitch here is, I don't know. I usually love this kind of thing. What do you guys think? Is it in the wrong spot? Is that what's bugging me about it? Why is it so, why does it show up so well here, but not on my pockets? <laughs> You know, the pockets literally look like coral. <laughs> I didn't even like take pictures of that um, recipe book. It would have been fun to show you guys. It turned out really cute. But I like it better with two rows. It's not very straight either. Oh, you're liking it? Oh, cool, Ray. That's awesome. I'm going to go for it. I think maybe with the center front rise. Okay, yeah. Okay, Megan, I think you're right. All right. I'm trusting in the process. Trusting, I'm trusting. I'm kind of top stitching this in a weird spot too, like not along, quite along the edge, but not too far in. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe it just looks different than what I'm used to. All right. Um, I'm gonna stitch down the pocket here on the sides and at the top as well, but we're gonna sew the center front seam as well. All right, so I have these this tummy panel, so I'm just gonna stitch a little bit here. I obviously can't stitch the whole thing because my center front rise is not sewn. So we're gonna do that next. I'm wondering if my serger will be enough of a um, seam for that. Like I might not, do I need to, I won't need to reinforce it with a straight stitch because I can top stitch it. All right, so we're gonna sew the rise. Remember, it's a 5 8 inch seam. Get that tummy panel out of the way. So we're gonna sew the center front rise here. Get that lined up. This orange doesn't match as well as I thought. <laughs> when I when I was like, oh, I have I have orange thread, you know? Like in my mind, I'm like, ooh, look, who has four cones of this dark orange thread, you know? And then I, I see it on here and I'm like, yeah, that's not really the same color. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna top stitch my center front rise and I'm not going to stitch the pun tummy panel in there. I almost said tummy tamil. <laughs> So when I was thinking about this tummy panel, 
I was thinking that you could, you could have done it where the tummy panel just went to the center front and then you sewed it into the center front rise seam, right? I feel like that is kind of the classic way to do it because it's usually going to a center front that has a uh, zipper fly, you know? My problem with this is that I feel like if you're gonna put four layers of fabric there, you are adding bulk to an area that you were trying to minimize. So it kind of defeats the purpose. And that's why I think with the, um, with the, what was it? Was it the Ash jeans? Who did I try that with? All right, I think you're right. I think the white will look good. Let's see how it looks on the inside. All right, and see, so remember I made this right here. I pivoted it out a half inch here to nothing here. So look, you can kind of see there's a little bit of space under there. I think that's going to be really great, right? Mashed the tummy down. So like I was saying, you could have made this to where it just stopped right here at center front rise. If you're a little bit nervous and you're like, this, I feel like I can wrap my head around the sewing of this, do what you want to do. But just know that you're going to have these four, four layers of fabric coming together right there, right? But at least you could top stitch it down or whatever. But, you know, it's adding a little bit of bulk. So because of this right here, at first I was like, is this gonna like pull on the pockets in a weird way? And then I realized, oh no, it's not because it's gonna be anchored here and here. And um, it's not like it's pulling on one pocket layer, it's pulling on them both, right? So, cause I was like, well, maybe I could stitch in the ditch. Maybe I could even, um, you know, stitch it in the seam allowance of the center front right. I don't think any of that's necessary and I was kind of over engineering it in my head, which is, you know, something I'm kind of prone to doing. So, all right, so here we have our front it's lining up a little, like I'm gonna put it up at the top there. I think it should, <laughs> I think I, I remember, look at this hack job, who cut this? What the heck? I remember when I made this pattern piece, I kind of made it so that it was a nice smooth transition. Like I, I made this, the um, the uh, right angle a little bit more accurate. So I'm just gonna kinda stitch this in here. Probably not necessary. Let's see how it looks there. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna smooth this out right here so I don't accidentally use this as my raw edge of my seam allowance. Okay. Let's do the back. There's so few pattern pieces in this, it's awesome. I'm gonna um, iron the pockets. I'm like second guessing that, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> cause I was like, hmm, I don't really wanna iron this thread cause it's stained with ink, uh, with pencil. Look at that, it's so bad. It is so bad. Okay, I never would have thought that would have happened. Live and learn, right? It's so dirty. Okay, I'm gonna pre-iron this. I don't always do this, but I think this time I am going to be kind to my future self and give myself a little bit of a leg up here because of the stretch nature of the fabric. It's probably already gonna look a little bit wavy when I go to stitch it down. You could probably see um, my pocket hem looked a little bit wavy and that's why I just ironed it out. That, that will calm down, so don't don't um, fret if you see that. First time you make stretch jeans, you're gonna be like, "Why are my things all you know wavy?" And you get you do got to be kind of cognizant of it as you're stitching certain areas. But once washed and ironed, it'll calm down. But I think when you're attaching these little pockets, I'm going to let's tuck these into the little fold down there. Having this pre-ironed will kind of help minimize the fiddling. 
I do realize I'm only pressing like a half inch, not the five eighths. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so I like to kind of compare my pockets, make sure, are they the same? <laughs> what was that? Oh, Amy, oh my goodness. Thank you. I have not heard that sound in so long. I didn't know what it was. Thank you for becoming a patron, Amy. Welcome, welcome. It's a pretty low key patron, Patreon. Whoa. I'm just checking my pocket. Are these solids, look at that. That one's kind of off. Let's let's even it up down here. <laughs> let's let's fake it, right? Right here. Yeah, we'll just iron this up a little bit more. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate it. Welcome to the patrons. All right. Let's see, let's trim these little threads here. I did sew some pockets recently where I actually ended up overlocking the perimeter because it was doing this kind of thing where it was like really thready. It might've been those coil shorts, no. I don't really sew without you guys. Must've been those. All right, so let's see. We have our back pockets here. Here's one. Here's the other. I sometimes forget how big my size has gotten, you know? <laughs> All right, so this, let's trim you. And let's see, do we want this leaf? Which cheek do we want? Which leaf? I mean, does it matter? <laughs> I think, let's see, let's try this like this. Let's see, sometimes you never know, it'll look different. I think this one's kind of like angling out. They're both kind of angling like this, aren't they? I think I liked it better like this. All right, let's do it. I like to start upside down. I'm gonna line up. I marked three corners here of the pocket marking. Just kind of get it general, All right? I didn't find that little soapstone thing. I'm really becoming into that thing. You know what I was doing the other day? When I sew, <laughs> I do. I actually think about it. It's always going in my head because, and I, and I have to say, you know, I explain things so much better when I'm not live. I know you'll never know if I'm really telling the truth there, but it's true. Like I sometimes later on after the stream, it'll a certain section. I won't even thinking about it. I'll be whatever thinking about the peach trees in my yard. And all of a sudden it'll pop into my head a better way to have said something, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I do. <laughs> Sorry you, you miss out on it. <laughs> So the other day, um, I recorded more of those those funny little YouTube shorts, those really, really short videos. Even if nothing ever happens with those, they're actually a really good exercise in being, you know, explaining something in a really short amount of time. Could you see my fold there? So here was the weird thing I had to deal with though, is I had on Sunday or Monday, P um, picked like 25 pounds of peaches off this tree and I, I dehydrated them, right? So I was cutting them up. I wasn't really peeling them, but sometimes if the peel was coming off, I would peel it, right? So, cause it'll dehydrate faster if there's no peel. <clears throat> but the peeling of peaches is a whole grueling thing that I didn't want to go down. 
but my thumbnail, and you can still kind of see it, is was stained from all the peaches I was handling. And it really shows up in those YouTube shorts. <laughs> it looks really awful. I really like the contrast stitching here. Sometimes I accidentally will hem, not accidentally, intentionally, I will hem my pocket to match the pocket. And then I do a contrast around the perimeter. And I'm finding that I actually don't like it when I do that. I really like it when it's contrast here and contrast around, you know. The camera really doesn't like this fine line stitching, right? It looks really wiggly. It's uh, definitely not looking as good. All right, but I like it. This, except for this, like, what's this going on here? Sheesh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take your guys' advice and use some a backing next time. I think the stretch woven really was not helping me too, you know? It looks a little wiggly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Tammy. My uh, biological father is an artist and I, I haven't had a whole lot of interaction with him, but one time I was getting a bunch of paintings framed and there, a lot of them were his. And he has a habit of giving you his opinion even if you don't want it. And one of, but one of his opinions is actually really good and it was that very thing. He didn't say it that way, he didn't explain it, but he was like, I think you should place these this way because it was of three of colored pencil drawings of one of our dogs that my friend had done. They're really, really cute, um, really nice pictures. And she did them in three colors. And so, and, they, and just by based on the photos and I had them so that the dog was kind of facing inward, but it looked so much better when he was, the two were facing outward and then you had the center one. Kind of the opposite of what you're saying, but it did make me think of things a little differently once he said, once we, he said that, I was like, oh, I like this too, you know. Okay, so same thing. I would start, you know, obviously with my pocket upside down. And usually this little thing, you'll hear me harp on this little folded back part of the pocket. If it's really thready, this one's not too bad. I will fold it down like a little corner down into the pocket like this and then go up. And then, you know, sew across it and it kind of encloses it. And then that way those little threads don't sneak out. I feel like I'm the only one in the world that this bugs. <laughs> so you hear me talk about it way too much. And I only recently started doing that. I was like, I really just, I just need to get rid of this, you know? So then I was like, I'm just gonna tuck it in there. <laughs> See like that, I just take that little corner, fold it down. It wouldn't work if you just stopped here and backstitch, it would just flip up. But because I do this little triangle here, and you do those triangles to help with the stress of your hand going in and out of the pocket, and I do that a lot. I, I do this as a nervous habit, you know, so. The center will make it perfect. I think this is cute, huh? I'm really hoping all the, the pencil graphite goes away and these loops, they're definitely sloppy. Not my proudest of pocket stitching. But if they really bug me, I can pull these pockets off and I could replace them um, with different ones. I have enough fabric, it would be really fiddly because my pants will be sewn together, but it's possible. So sometimes giving myself those mental um, Backup plans kind of helps me keep going and just go, let's just see what happens. We'll give it time. We'll give it a chance for the washing machine to kind of sort some of that out. I'm gonna sew the center back rise. So put it right sides together.
Now, if I wasn't top stitching the, the rise, and you might not be, I probably would not just overlock. Oh, my stitch is a little bit off, huh? I would probably not just overlock to secure the seam. I would probably sew it on my regular machine and then put the serging next to it because you, is, is, unless your machine does a really good job, so when you pull it apart here, see how I'm seeing some stitches? See, I can tell though, my, my tension's not quite right and I didn't notice that. You can see this little ridge right here means it's not quite right. So you probably need to adjust that. It'll be fine for finishing the edges. But yeah, like I'm saying, if your machine does this, you're gonna want to have another seam next to it or I'm gonna secure it by top stitching it and I'm not pulling it really hard. And making it nice and smooth. I also, when I top stitch the rise, I always press my seam allowance as I'm looking out the pant and from the right side, I always press my seam allowance to my right. So under here, I press the seam allowance this way. I do it on the front and I do it on the back. And then because I am pressing it the same way, when I go to sew the, the inseam, the juncture right here will be offset. I'm just looking at my stitches. So when I get right here and sew this inseam, the front is going to press this way and the back is going to press this way. It's just kind of a funny thing that happens, you know. It makes sense if you think about it, but just press them both to your right as you're looking at them. And then it'll, that'll happen. All right, so I want to read the directions to see how she recommends putting your contrast hems on uh, because I feel like there's a couple ways. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know if they do it on each leg, which I would assume, and then you put your pants together. I feel like I'm doing this a little bit out of order. Sorry. Okay. So let's do the fronts first. Let's get our peaks. Sorry, my foot's on the presser foot. I mean the foot pedal. I will also never call that the right thing. <laughs> Mine is um, stretchy, Amy, because this pattern in particular calls for stretch woven. So this poplin here is a stretch. But yeah, a lot of people do, they do, um, what's it called you guys, power mesh? Yeah, power mesh, just like you said. Yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, I don't happen to have any of that. Upper front, lower back. Why is that called upper front? Why is that called upper front? That makes me so nervous that I, that there was only one pattern piece, right? For the, oh, I have a pre, pre-release version. Maybe it's just a thing. <laughs> I won't worry about it. Where's my um, pin cushion? Oh well. Okay. So don't get your angle confused. I'm gonna set mine there. This one goes here. Hmm, I think I'm gonna overlock this together and then top stitch it. So let's take both over. I'll bring the, the backs too, we'll do them all. Since we're there. Oh, there's my pincushion. <laughs> right where I left it. 
All right, 5 8 inch seam. So when you're lining up things like this that have these points and angles, remember you have to line it up. This little juncture right here, you have to line that up at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. And if you're not sure, you know, get a little ruler and make sure because if you don't do that, this is what's going to happen. If you line this edge, this point up to this point, and then you sew it on the 5 8 inch seam, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a jog right there, right? And same on the inseam, and then your pants will be too narrow because you're like, oh, I don't want to take that out. Uh, your pants will get really narrow really quick. And, you know, I see, I've seen people do things like that, and then they're like, these patterns, this pattern sucks. <laughs> well, I really am thinking of some of the teenagers when they would do that, they, um, we're really shy about using the whole seam allowance. And I think it for them it was just like, they were just so happy that they were actually getting it sewn together and everything that um, some of those details, it was just so much, their, their learning curve was just so steep. They, they, their, their, um, the whole program was just so fast paced, you know? And they were absolutely right. They should be proud that they were, you know, getting a garment sewn together, but then it wouldn't fit because they were using eighth inch and quarter inch seam allowances. And most of the patterns they were using were store bought with five eighths. So look, my needle's gonna go right there at that juncture. And then it, you know, it lines up. This thread looks really orange now. All right, let's do our other one. Um, chronically losing things today. All right. And this is pretty confusing. Like, it is really hard to judge. Like, is that 5 eighths, you know? Sometimes you'll see pattern companies will do this. They'll do a little, um, you know, tag right there. And the problem with doing this, I'm going to show you why you don't always want to do that. It is really helpful, though, for lining up your seam. Oh, that's what's going on here. I have two foot pedals. But it depends on which way that seam is going to get pressed once you're done sewing it. So on the instructions it says to press the seam allowance going down. So Put, clipping that worked out, but if it's going up and you're not using a serger, you still have a lot of your seam allowance, what'll happen is you see my little seam allowance here is, is missing there. It wouldn't get caught in this seam here. Say it was all the way out to here, you know, and I trimmed it off. You'd have this weird tag of seam allowance and then your seam wouldn't catch it. This gets pressed down, so it's gonna be okay. Let me look at chat real quick. Um, do I need to be careful? You know, oh my gosh, these are these are pretty flamboyant, you guys. <laughs> um, no, I think the stretch wovens behave a lot better. Yeah, this little angle here, it could be on the bias, but that went really good, well. Like I didn't feel like that was really hard at all. It wasn't hard at all, honestly. Say we were sewing that on my single needle machine and it was quilting cotton, I feel like I would it would be far more prone to the stretching. All right, the peak is in the inseam. So this is gonna go on this leg and then this one will go on the other leg.
This feels pretty stable. This this is that rip stop and it still has a bias, but it's not really going to behave that way. Okay. I think it was a little easier to sew with my poplin on the top. I was kind of curious. It's a little easier to manage. The poplin's really lightweight compared to this. I obviously don't have it very lined up, do I? One more leg. Let's do it with the pop one on top this time. If this pop one's kind of a clingier. You know, someone asked me in the comments of the cutting video about this fabric, like, yeah, I don't provide links to things like that because I don't know. I tell you where it's at, <laughs> but um, it's from Hearts Fabric and I do have that 10% off for you guys, the code's 10 so so. Don't forget to use that. It's good anytime. There's a, it comes in blue too, this, this one right here, this fabric. Yeah, it does. You guys, look at these things. <laughs> this is gonna be okay, you guys, right? <laughs> Trusting you. <laughs> Yeah, me too, Amy. The, have you looked at the hashtag on Instagram? There's some really cute ones. Yeah, Libby, so, see it? Uh, you see it in there? It's very subtle. This one I got from Maker's Fabric and it's got that stretch. It comes in some really nice colors. All right, so it says to press these down. Oh, I should have ironed those over there. And then top stitch. What do we think about that? I don't really want to. I was just thinking about because we're doing the contrast top stitch. Yeah, but let's iron this. I can pull it off. <laughs> that the way you phrase that is really interesting. Pull it off makes it sound like there's something to be pulled off. <laughs> you know, like a feat that I have to perform, which makes me a little nervous. Okay, I love the fabric combo. I mean, this is so lucky that I had already bought this and then she sent me the pattern and I was like, ooh, I have a stretch woven. And then I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make pants out of this. And then when I ran across this um, ripstop, I was like, oh, ho, ho, ho. I love it. You know, I was hoping it would match and it did. Oh, see, there's a reason that I don't want to press it down. You can see my thread. Shoot. 
Maybe I do want to press it going up. You know, what do you guys think? Because my thread is orange. See? Ooh. All right, what do you guys think? Press the seam up with the white top stitch on here or orange top stitch, I could do orange. Or press it down, put the white top, top stitch down here. Like, is my orange thread really gonna be a problem? You could totally sew all these, these pants in French seams too. Maybe it's not a big deal. Hmm. Oh no. You can wear them. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I'll iron the other one while you guys tell me what you think about that. I have these uh, soapstone marks. They come out, right? <laughs> I'm not going to iron them just in case. <laughs> I don't really like having, oh, I was about to say, I, well, I don't. I don't actually, I like having clothes that are like this, like this. This is like so me. But on the other hand, I don't like having outfits that say, look at me, you know, and this is feeling a little bit look at me-ish. I mean, let's be honest, I don't see anybody. I don't see any humans ever, besides my husband now. I don't know, you guys, I'm doubtful. I like the contrast top stitch on the solid. Hi, Hannah. Always press to the dark side. Always press to the dark side. Hmm. I think I'm really torn. I, I feel the same way Hannah does. I really like the um, top stitch being contrast. You, oh, bye Libby. You vote for white top stitch for more subtle finish. Oh, you mean a uh, white on the white. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I feel like it's um, less busy. <laughs> right, Amy, I know. Humans, what are those? All right, I think I, I like the contrast, but I feel like, yeah, I think this is pretty standout. And the white top stitch looks kind of sporty. All right, I'm going to keep it down here. I, I kind of wish I would have done this in the order that they have it. Look at my thing doesn't line up there. Um, because uh, you would be doing one leg at a time. That'd be a little easier to handle. I don't know why I thought you do this at the end. This it, it, It'd be, you know, do one leg at a time. If you do the tummy panel, you kind of got to do it the way we did it, but you know. <laughs> yeah, right, Anna. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about that that contrast top stitch. I feel the same way as you. Here, I'm kind of like, uh, maybe I'll, you know, it's kind of like um, business at the top, party at the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, I think you guys are right about the, the orange thread is really not a big deal. So uh, there's definitely been lots of projects where I switch, I do change my serger thread just because um, it'll show like that. So. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Yeah, it's more the whole look. I'm a little bit like, eh. I can't tell that they're looking at my back pockets. You know? 
Really, I feel like something like this makes them look at the pocket and it's not like they're looking at your butt. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? Like, they're not, we're not really computing the fact that, that that's my butt, you know? I go to the post office too. And I, I sometimes see, you know, a citizen. <laughs> Post office like oh, is open like so few hours. It's been hard like when I have packages to ship. Um, I can't. I have to. It have to be really strategic because they open at 10 a.m. and I come into work before that. And I'm one of those people that I'm like, where I'm at work, I stay at work. <laughs> you know. So it's a kind of a monumental effort to get me to leave just to take packages. And I've been doing that. I've been like such a good girl. Like, okay, just go do it because otherwise you're gonna be like, oh shoot, I missed it. And then you're gonna say, oh, I'll do it on my way into work. And then you get to work and go, oh, I forgot again. And then the cycle continues. All right. So there's a little bit of waving going on there. And I, I keep seeing this too. Kind of hoping it kind of relaxes. It's partly this stretch, partly the lighter weight fabric. Okay, we almost got pants. They are looking kind of groovy. <laughs> I don't mean that as a compliment. <laughs> All right, let's put these together. So what are some strategies on matching our peak here? <laughs> true Ray, true Ray. Yeah, exactly, Penny. I think so too. I think here we'll just let the bottom fabric shine, you know? All right, so we, we want these to match, right? Especially with such a high contrast. So let's see. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack mine. I'm gonna pre-sew. You know how like people who work out um, drink pre-workout? We're gonna pre-sew. Or this is like the tailgate party before the game. You didn't know that, did you? So if I'm going to pre-sew it, then I can make sure I nail it, you know? Maybe I should pre-sew a little further. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. And then when you go through the serger, you're not worried about it because the serger is going to, you know, it's going to push. So this is the thing with things like this. It doesn't matter how really good you are at lining it up and putting it through, pinning it a billion times. This is what happens. Your presser foot pushes this thickness and it pushes it off of what you just spent all that painstaking time lining up. So you want to get it pretty much, that's almost there. It depends on, if I press the seam this way or this way, it kind of matches a little bit different. Ah, oh, Michelle, yeah, right. Some months are easier than others, but don't worry about it. You know? Um, okay. Let's make sure we're not sewing the wrong leg to the wrong leg, too. And I'm glad you like the newsletter. <laughs> I do, I do like to, wait. What, what did I just do here? Did I just put that, no, no, I didn't. There we go. Okay, let's pre-sew this one here. And some of the ways I will get something to line up to is, you, know, you can use a pin. You can draw it on here. You can go, oh, okay. Um, you know, here is my 5 8 inch seam. And look, this, this one doesn't line up. This is that one that doesn't line up that great. So I have to go to the smaller one here. So we'll line it up like this. And then we know, okay, that's the juncture, you know? Personally, I like doing this. I like finding that juncture. It's right here, right? And then <clears throat> 
going like this, using my pin and kind of searching for it, like putting my pin point there and then sliding it down on there. There's a lot of little tricks you can do. But then once you do this, once you push your pin to the side to actually pin it through, you can get it off a little bit. So sometimes I will press it down, make sure those two layers are lined up. Oh shoot, I lost it, there we go. Like that. And then I pin other pins like this. I'm gonna pre sew though. I find that that is the no, the foolproof way, right? And I will fold back like this. Okay, adjust a little bit up, right there. I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna put my presser foot right on top of that. And then, I shouldn't have backstitched. Um, and then I will sew above and below it. That way I don't give my machine a chance to push it away. I just press my machine right on top of that juncture. Look at that, perfect. All right, so now we have one leg ready to go. And you could do all this and you can still get things a little bit off too, so don't be too hard on yourself. Machines have a mind of their own sometimes, you know? Oh yeah, right Kate? I have seen that too. You know, one other little trip trick when you're easing things like that is um, I put the slipperier or the one that's bigger on the bottom and my feed dogs will kind of aid in that. Okay, so same thing. Um, let's do this way. It's about right there. Down. <laughs> that was so far off. <laughs> that was kind of funny. These did not look all, these, all these little like jogs. I, I didn't see those in the surgery. <laughs> Ray. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Business at the top, party at the bottom. <laughs> Let's see if I have that about right. There we go. Double check. That one's a little bit off. Let's move that one a little bit. Good thing we didn't backstitch, right? We do have a little bit of thread vomit happening there. I don't like it when I have to take out stitches like inside my serging. My serger thread is pretty gigantic, so it's a little easier to spot. Easier to grab just you know, and this is contrast thread, which <laughs> helps a lot. Oh, that's a good idea, Tammy. Those, those two prong pins, they're so lightweight. You know, he's right here. But that would aid, I think, in shifting. I think you're right. I had that perfect and then I moved it. It's like the double hold. Let's see, let's look just to get a little sneak peek. It's a little better, huh? Okay, let's do one more. 
And we're going to do our inseam. Am I going to top stitch any of my inseam or side seam? Hmm. You know, one thing I saw in the Instagram hashtag for these pants was some of them had rivets that were, it, that was so cute to me. Oh, I started above. That's a bad idea. Let's mash it down here. No, don't backstitch. Don't backstitch. <laughs> oh, and let me let me continue this right here. Yeah. Don't poke all the way th through. Just push down and sew. Bonjour, Florent. Don't poke all the way through, just put down and, oh, you mean just like, like this. I see what you're saying. That's a good tip. I like that. So basically you're saying stick it like this above and below the juncture. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I like that. All right, let's serge these together. All right. I feel like I really did not do these in the order. Because a lot of times what I like to do is I like to assemble a left leg and a right leg, and then I put them together, you know? I think a lot of um, home sewing patterns, though, have you do it where it's the whole front, the whole back, and then you do your side seams and end seams. All right, so when you get to your pocket here, make sure all these little threads here are to the seam allowance. And don't let your machine get pushed around by that thickness of the pocket opening. All right, I'm getting closer to down here, so I'm gonna start gearing up. This is all matching, no problem, but you know, I just wanna make sure I have a nice smooth transition. My, my pants are not lined up very well right here, and that's what you're seeing, why so much is being cut off. All right, so I need to make sure my serger needle goes to the left of this white thread. Should we check it? Not bad, whatever this is. <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's, that's probably the uh, stay stitch thread. See, there it is in there. We can pull that to the inside. We can even remove that since we can see the thread there. You know, I, I usually do like removing threads like that because, because of that. All right, let's do the other out seam. So if I wanted to do any top stitching of out seams or in seams, probably would be a good idea not to do all these seams first. You can still get in there. These are pretty roomy, but it does make it easier if you, you know, get as much of your top stitching done before it's hard. fabric is so easy to sew. It's so stable. It, it doesn't quite have the 20% stretch. And I meant to show you guys how to figure that out and I'm, I'm, I forgot. All right, so here I am. I want to be to the left of that stitching. Just barely. I don't want to take up more of my seam allowance. Have our rise, I mean our inseam. Sorry, I always do that too. All 
Mm. Orange thread. Kind of tacky. Yeah, I'm losing a little bit here. There we go. So here's my seam. I'm still like making sure this presses and doesn't push it because, you know, my stitch length is a little bit long, so it could still push it off. All right, get this rise on here. Remember, like see my seam allowance is pressed this way and this way, and now they'll just nestle together, which kind of aids you in getting it lined up nicely. I feel like I trimmed a little bit more. This machine also, uh, for the 5 8 the seam itself is pretty narrow. It's not narrow, but usually what you see me do is a seam and then I overlock it and I'm not trimming this much off. All right, last bit. Interesting. Yeah, I bet quilters would do that. That's awesome, Tammy. Like a double mini all. Exactly. Yeah, that's so funny because when you said that, it instantly clicked because that's so much of the time I just do it with my all. And I think I showed you guys that recently where I poked into a seam like this and I poked all the way through to make sure that it stayed lined up one on top of the other also great for that but these angled seams are a little trickier so doing that double prong that's such a good tip okay let's see how I did a little nervous I'm gonna trim some of these little threads here I saw two more there doo doo do, 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 do. No, we don't need to hear circus music right now. These are going to be really cute. <laughs> no, you guys. <laughs> oh, my camera flashed. Did you see that? I don't like that. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how my matching went. Well, that's pretty good. I'm always saying, make sure your threads are with the seam allowance, but obviously I missed a few on this one. Let's see if I can get rid of this one here. And then that way it won't even matter. Oh, come on. Because I stitched it, it gets immortalized. What I want is that one that's peeking on the right side. I think that's that one. Okay, I got it. All right, let's see. That's one. Here's another one. They all have this little... See, but you know, I think I'm going to need to go back and stitch another seam here. It's fine down here. Eh, maybe not. Let's get rid of that real quick. See that? This There's my stitching. 
it was a little bit too far in at the top, so I just ignored it and did it at those seam allowance. Pre-game. All right, there we go. We get rid of a chunk there. Let's check the other one. They all have this, <laughs> this funny little loop. It's so funny. Good reminder though that it's there. So you get rid of it. It's pretty amazing that your needle, if you sew through a thread, secures it just once. You would think that the, the thread would probably split, right? And it, and it would be, you know, you could, I could just pull it right here, right? But no, look at that. I mean, one little stitch goes through that thread and it, because it's plied, it locks it in. All right, last one was this one here. And that one looks okay. All right, so the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm gonna stitch these same things with my single needle machine. Cause see, you can see my tension's not quite right on the serger and you can see the threads are poking through. You don't think so? Okay. So I'm gonna do the lower part in this white first. See the tension is a little, look at that, it's, it's really tight on the um, lower part. All right, so let's just stitch these with white on the lower. My preference when you're using your serger to sew seams is to have the surging, like a fat 16th of an inch away from a seam, you know? And I think you know what I'm talking about. Like we see this in ready to wear stuff. I don't typically do this, like make it right up against the edge. That's a, too, too, a bit too budget for me. I, and I'm not trying to hate on it. Like you can do it because it is faster because then you're not doing this. Like I, you know, usually I would do a seam and then a little space and then I would surge it, right? And that is double the sewing, I get it. And you're like, well, the serger is strong enough. Why do I need to go back? Why do I need to, to sew it and then serge it? This gets into my whole argument about why sergers aren't really that necessary to begin with, you know, and I have a whole video about this. Yeah, I use them and I really like them and stuff, but I definitely sew my share of knits without them. And um, I would stand behind that. The sergers aren't, you know, they haven't been around that long. The world existed without sergers, <laughs> you know? And ironically, sergers are for knits, which don't even unravel, right? They don't even fray. So um, just using them for sewing wovens, God, my tension is so bad right here, is kind of over the top, but it does make sewing a little faster because you don't have to do French seams or zigzags. It looks more professional. And it is a really nice tidy look on the inside. Uh, so, yeah, so did I do all four? One, two, three, four. All right, so let's switch to orange the top. And we'll do our side seams and end seams real quick. And then we're gonna do our waistband. Oh, I should have done my hem. Dag nab it. I always do that, don't I? Maybe I'll make sure they, I actually am not sure about the, the hem length. These might be a little long for me because they're drafted for someone who's taller than me. So maybe I should wait to hem them. Usually I hem them, I just hem. <laughs> Which, yeah, totally. Yeah, the, the, I understand why the tension's off on this poplin, but it's off a little bit on the, it's it's off on the ripstop too. So I don't really have it dialed in well. And I have a feeling it happened when I re-threaded it. So yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's definitely 
that change is going to affect it for sure. All right, so let's just Put my stitch length a little bit shorter. done let's do the side team because these are stretch you know so and they're and they're pretty close fitting last thing I want to do is wear these and you can kind of see my threads on the side seams that would very not very look very nice not good blah, blah, blah. yeah exactly Kate yeah it's become the new norm but when <clears throat> sergers were first making their way into the market <clears throat> that was how you would tell if a garment was higher quality, was no serger. <laughs> so that, I, I do admit that sometimes I kind of speak in terms that are probably a little bit old fashioned in the, the home sewing world, because that's kind of, you know, where I came up. I can't believe I'm kind of old fashioned now. Yeah, and they'd have to do something with the uh, shears, but I have seen them use, um, I call it a marrow stitch, but home sewers call it the oh, rolled hem on the serger. They will do that with shears. The world has become, like they've made things for the world to be, uh, that they are more socially acceptable now. All right, so this is what the lo inside looks like. And we're gonna do now our waistband and I have a, a little experiment to try. I'm not using a zigzag machine, so if you are, you could do it uh, the way the instructions tell you to do and you get a nice clean finished waistband on the inside and you zigzag that last step. And so that kind of um, and still encourages the stretch because it's a stretch woven, right? It's a little different. All right. All right, so my little experiment is if I do it the way it is in the instructions, but I don't have a zigzag, could I, because I really like the way it is in the instructions where it's clean finished on the inside, but I'm not sure. And this is the ripstop in this um, like golden color that I used on the utility jacket. So same fabric. You know, I actually don't, oh yeah, okay, good. I was like, oh, I don't know if this is the right uh, grain line, but it is. <laughs> yeah, right, Kate? I know, they do these weird little things where they're like, they won't ever know if we do this other thing. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, put a fancy ribbon on it or yeah, bind something. All right, so let's pretend this is my waistband. I think I'm about to run out of bottom thread, let's see. Oh, I'm not. What was that weird noise? I'm suspicious. All right, so let's say this is my waistband and I'm not sure if I think do she, does she have you edge stitch it? I'm just kind of curious. What I, I'll show you how I did my quail. But I kind of want to do this close to the instructions if I can. Wait, where, where is that? 
Okay, so I don't think that there is. Yeah, you don't you don't edge it. So the, this is how I did mine. All right. So I sewed my waistband together, right sides together at the top edge. Oof. Oof. It's just dark. Right, we'll brighten this up a little bit. See, so I sewed it right sides together. This is the outside right here. This is the inside. Then I understitched the inside waistband to the inside, right? And then um, I took this whole waistband. I, I still left the center back open for the elastic insertion. And I took this whole waistband, you know, unit, and I overlocked it to the shorts like this, you know, just like that. Right sides together, right? Easy peasy, and then I was done. I, I didn't do anything else except put the elastic in. So my question right now is, the way you, you, she has you do it is, um, you sew the waistband to the garment, you sew it to the top edge, and then you turn under, put all the seam allowance into the waistband and clean finish it. Hi, Martina, how's it going? Oh, your son's wedding and reception, congratulations! Well, why are you here? Unless you bring in wedding cake. Wow, congratulations, mother of the groom. Wow, that's big. <laughs> so um, anyway, so the clean finish is really nice because it'd be smoother against your tummy and all that, right? Less bulk, right? This is a little bulky. This, But because this was jeans, I knew I probably couldn't turn under and clean finish it because it was a little heavier weight. But this poplin is lighter weight. So let's see, if I actually do it this way without using a zigzag, because like I said, I don't have that capability on this machine. What, how is it gonna go? So let's, I'm gonna stitch it down real quick and then I'm going to stretch it and see how my stitches go. Two kids, 11 more to go, aw. Are you a grandma too, Martina? I can't remember. All right, so here we go. Oh, I think that would totally be fine. It really doesn't want to stretch as much though. Like, look at this, this is way stretchier. It's almost like I stretched it out by doing that, but it's not popping the stitches. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try it her way without doing the zigzag. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than how she does it because um, I find it a little easier to end on the outside. You know me, you know me. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it it's nice, right? I mean, I, I'm not like against it. I do it all the time. I just did it on these, you know, this fabric. And see, the thing is like a lot of folks will even surge all the pieces, pre-surge them all, and that adds a lot of bulk. This, it is nice, nice and tidy. All right, so you're gonna take your waistband and we're gonna sew the center back seam here, right? So put your short ends together and you're gonna sew your um, 5 eighths inch seam. And seam with this one. Um, I'm going to open it up. Oh right, you don't actually is there notches on here? I can't remember. You, you wanna, I'm gonna uh, take out some of these stitches. I'm trying to remember. Let's look at my elastic too. I'm not a big fan of non-roll, but I got it. I wanted something a little beefier than the braided elastic I really like. I 
let's take out these stitches between, sorry. I'm gonna look up it up in the instructions, the exact um, instructions here, make sure I don't steer you wrong. You became a grandma this November. Wow, that is pretty cool. <laughs> I can't even imagine being a grandma. <laughs> All right, let me look at this so I do it roughly like um, the instructions. Okay. Stitch your center back seam on one waistband, right sides together, matching notching notches, press seam open. Oh, I top stitched mine, you don't have to do that. And I, I don't think you need to. Okay. All right, and then when you leave that open, oh, okay, so they do this so that you don't even stitch the center back. So you butt up the center, so you fold it back here at your seam line, and then these two are separate, and then you butt them up, and then you sew across the top. So I, I did mine together, and I'm hopefully leaving a big enough opening to get my elastic in there. It's one way to do it. All right, so let's... We have orange thread top and bottom, right? Yeah, so this is gonna be our inside waistband. I'm gonna do this one first. And I'm gonna do it to the inside of the waist. Oh, cool, Allison, what a great idea. Well, if you're using fabric, like usually you would make a bag for camp chairs with like a nylon, I would totally surge that stuff because it can get thready. Pa a pants block and charmeuse. Woo, that's an adventurous fabric. <laughs> All right, make sure you get the um, bottom edge. So it's gonna be this curved one, you know, the you can see the curve there. You're gonna put it right side to the inside of your garment, right? You're gonna line up your seams. So center seam to that back rise, right? Um, you can pin it if you want. I want a label. There we go. I'm going to, I'm gonna pre-sew my label on here. They're a little scrappy, that's awesome though. Oof, a lot of steam I think, Kate. <laughs> Impatience. My labels have barely any seam allowance. It's the one thing I don't like about them. First time I've ever remembered to do this style waistband with, and get my label on there. Woo woo. <laughs> All right, let's see. Make sure I got my correct waistband there. All right. We're gonna sew this right side to the inside of your pants. Lining up that seam allowance there. And this should just pretty easily just go on here. Here's some notches. Press your si side seams towards the back. Stay on that 5 8 inch seam. I found this uh, went together really easily, so you shouldn't have any problems matching or anything unless you maybe made some uh, size changes and you forgot to maybe adjust the waist and you had to recut it. 
That's when you find that out, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, that's right. I made my uh, waist a little bit bigger and I forgot to adjust my waistband. And I ran out of fabric. Then you can just piece it together. No one will know. Okay, side seams towards the back. brightness and all that okay what time is it oh it's only 1 30 I'm used, used to like pretty epic long Saturday streams you know all right so there we go what is that I thought I felt a bump I think it was a uh, um I don't know what that was. All right. I think they have you trim this. Trim it, uh, trim it down. And I, and I actually do recommend this because your elastic is so wide in there, your seam allowance is gonna give you kind of a headache. That, I don't need that marked. I was gonna mark, remark the center. Black chartreuse and so wow, that sounds so fancy. I used to do those kinds of fabrics. Then I learned better. <laughs> <I'm just> teasing. <laughs> I really don't have places to wear those, but I was thinking like, oh my gosh, now that there's no pandemic. Now that people aren't traveling much, I may have to go to the Christmas party for my husband's work. Oh, I've kind of gotten out of it because he was traveling the last few years. I've gone to two of them. I went to the last one. I went to the last one and I just was kind of did a whole like, F it, dude, <laughs> and just threw something together and went, <laughs> you know, like I wasn't gonna be stretched to, stressed about it. I even wore um, my ash, black ash jeans and um, this Desi Gull, uh, pretty cool uh, jacket that I turned into a top. And it was pretty, pretty cool. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't wear that there. I wore that to my reunion. I wore this um, beaded sweater that I never get to wear. And it was great. I was comfortable. I wasn't wearing a dress or anything. It was great. I went and then we, we did a little thing and then we left. <laughs> it was awesome. And I saw my old assistant because her partner works at the same company and I totally forgot I'd get to see her. So I was like, oh my God, I know somebody here. <laughs> All right, where's my other uh, waistband? Here it is, okay. All right, so now take your other waistband. So one of the reasons I usually like to stitch down these things is that when you're threading your elastic in there, your elastic likes to do this. And, you, and it's really aggravating, you know? But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna follow the instructions. All right, so this is the top edge. So now we're gonna sew along the top. Okay, right sides together. See that, start at the back. Make sure, like I would walk it around and make sure you have the same curve going to it because there's nothing like sewing the bottom edge to the top edge and you have to take the whole thing out, you know? Speak, make sure. Seam seam allowance. Line up all your notches. Try not to stretch this as you sew. It's probably gonna get a little bit stretched. In fact, I am gonna stretch mine a little bit just because of the spindle needle. 
eh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Um, it probably will get a little stretched out when you do this, and it'll probably be totally fine. So don't stress out about it. You might see a little bit of waviness. You might, um, you know, it, it's going to bounce back once it's been washed and worn a few times. Remember, this is going to a pretty wide part on your body. Like, it's not going to the narrowest part. So it needs to get over your hips and then rest just above so that they don't, your pants don't fall down. The reason this whole pattern works is because it's not going all the way up to the narrowest part of your waist. That's why this waist looks so huge. It's going to my biggest part of me. Okay, I'm going to trim this down now. They are looking nice, huh? I'm excited. Yeah, and don't forget if you guys are interested through August uh, 15th, there's a code um, right here. See it right there? She gave you guys a code, which is really nice. Not Usually folks don't do that, you know? We give them how-to videos and they don't even say hi. <laughs> you know, like they don't even like our project. But Decades is really nice and she really likes what we're doing here. So it was really nice of her to give you guys a code. And it's good for everything on our site for all the PDF patterns. PDF. Except for this pattern in particular, you can do PDF and print. You get 20% off. I don't get anything for that. So I'm just, you know, passing it along. I'm not trying to make money off you guys or anything. All right. So maybe we could start pressing this. So like, remember, we're, this is the right side of our garment here. And now um, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of pressing here and stuff. It, it is really hard for me not to want to like you know understitch this or top stitch it, but at the same time you don't really want this to get too stretched out, or have another opportunity for the stitches to pop. And then we're gonna turn this under, and then if you have a zigzag you can zigzag this, but we're going to top stitch it. All right, so let's iron this. We're almost done. Uh, oh, here. I'm like, what is that called again? <laughs> like, doesn't my iron look like a fat little, like, mouse right now with a long tail? Wouldn't that be cute if someone made an iron look like a mouse? So let's turn these. This is a lot of fabric here. do this. Can I get them there? A ironing board would be nice on this project. <laughs> no, I thought I turned that. Shoot. Like this. We're going to iron all this. I'm going to encourage it so that when we turn it, it wants to lay nice and we don't have to worry about some of the things. Let's let that warm up. There's our tummy panel. What the world needs now is lots of tummy panels. All right. Is that warm enough now? A little bit better. I'm just gonna press these seam allowances first and then I'm gonna press it into shape. I'm trying not to lean over and get my head in the way, so it's really awkward. I'm just 
just pressing. You know, I'm thinking we might want to clip this curve a little bit. Right here at the top. This, this one. Let's clip that a little bit. We don't want this to not lay nice and flat on the inside of the waistband. Right here, right? Because this is going to bend over into inside and it needs to splay out. So let's clip this. All right. I should bring my phone over here so I could look at chat, huh? I always have this funny feeling that uh, one of these days when I can't see chat, you guys are all going to be shouting at me, Sarah, there's a troll in the chat, there's a troll in the chat. Because, you know, that's what I'm used to watching streams where they have that happen. <laughs> all right, so now... Do I want to do it at the waist too? I probably do. It's got the same curve. Should have done it first. The thing is with the um, waist, it's really the waistband that needs the clipping, not the pant. Man, my struggle of keeping my hands looking nice for the camera is so hard. Like this little, I don't even know where this little cut came from. And it was tiny. And now it looks terrible, you know. And then today I have this little red patch because I whacked my hand against the um, curling wand. What are those called? Styling wands? You know, the heat. I've touched that before and it doesn't get me. And I was like, you know what, of course, like I'm really working hard to try and keep my hands looking not distracting. And of course I burn myself. I'm still getting rid of this thing, you know? All right. All right, now we're gonna fold it so that the waistband we're gonna iron it along this top edge. Oh, it's kind of dark. Why'd you guys tell me that? Let's see here. Hi, Leah, how's it going? <laughs> I'm just uh, looking at chat and I'm gonna turn up the brightness a little bit. Oh, it's so much better. Why did you guys say anything? There are sewing trolls. No, I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> they would probably not be from the sewing world. I definitely think there are sewing trolls because they're the ones that dislike videos. Because I see dislikes on certain videos that really don't warrant a dislike. They're not usually tutorials. It's like a Friday sews or something like that. Some, you know, it's like, that's a sewing vlog. Like, how can you, if you don't like it, don't watch it, you know? I think those are just people that are like, why is that person getting more views than me or something, you know? And I, because I, I see it on, on certain Friday shows and I'm like, why did someone dislike this? This is so sweet and innocent and 
Like, if you don't like it, just don't watch it. It's just about their garment and how they liked sewing it, you know? <laughs> like, come on. It's not a tutorial. Like, if it's a tutorial and you don't like it, I understand that. I have dislikes on some of mine. But then I also have, like, a ton of comments saying that it's great. So I think it's just, like, we're all different. It's how we learn. By and large, if most people like it and they're finding it useful, it's probably fine. And the person who disliked it was either like mad at, um, you know, they're not understanding it or something and they're just frustrated. It doesn't really hurt videos, so. All right, so now we're, I'm gonna turn under this edge here. Remember, I'm working on the right side of the garment. So we're gonna turn this, I'm gonna fold this just past this seam line. I'm going to iron it down. So now, the like I said, the easier way would be to assemble your whole waistband, not with the elastic in it yet, and then sew it right sides together to your pants, and you're done. And then you just insert your elastic, right? But if you want this nice, clean, finished look, I think going about it where you leave the last edge to turn under on the right side makes it so that you don't have to worry about catching it on the inside, you know? But because you, you they recommend doing it with a zigzag, you might be able to feel better about finishing on the inside. It's, it is a, such a nice touch to have this completely clean finished. I'm a little concerned about how it'll function as far as like over time, like stretching, getting it on and off like this. Um, my itch to stitch pull on jeans have weathered really well. I don't think I've noticed um, popped stitches or anything, but that's what I was about to say is I think that even if you had a few pop stitches, you're probably never going to notice it unless you're kind of like, I'm curious, is that happening or not? And you're kind of keeping an eye on it, you know? Why is this pulling weird right here? Get that nice and flat. Where that pocket sits there. What? Oh, this is the top of the pocket. I was a little confused just now. <laughs> I did not know where I was. <laughs> it's funny because of where I thought I was. I was like, well, why, why is that doing that? <laughs> thought it could be right there. <laughs> All right, almost done here. Did I, did I, I think I might have missed a section too. Because what I do is I kind of do like a chunk and then I go back and then I go and do the in-between. Let's get this on the edge better. My iron wasn't quite hot enough when I did that at first. I always think it would be really funny if someone was, um, like doing a video maybe a live sewing video and they were showing their screen and you saw that they were the one disliking all the videos <laughs> wouldn't that be so funny <laughs> okay and thanks for nobody complaining that I'm not doing Friday sews right now <laughs> but I didn't do it for two weeks. <laughs> All right, one little section. I knew I'd left a little section. Here we go. Try and get this nice and flat. You can see I'm kind of pulling my pant to kind of relax it. Make sure that it's not like pulling at weird angles. You want all this just flat and relaxed, you know, and then arrange it. I'll probably... I'll probably pin it in a few places at the sewing machine, but right now I'm just ironing it. A lot of times I don't even do that. I just go for it. Um, it just depends on how fiddly the garment is in general. But this one's pretty stable being a stretch woven, you know. All right. Got our whole edge prepared. I'm back. <laughs> yes, they're sewing trolls, right? I know. 
Maybe jealous. I don't know. Lauren Moore. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, orange door hinge. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> Why wouldn't they just say we have a troll? Maybe they don't want to call attention to them. I would understand that. Um, me leaving this little opening kind of caused a little thread there. All right, so this is the inside, this is the outside, right? So let's start at the back. And I'm doing it, you know, I have my pant inside out, but I'm sewing on the right side on the outside of the garment here. Thanks, Beverly. I, I really like them, and I, I really like the, um, you know, the engagement I get for the most part, but I feel like I am kind of capitalizing on someone else's thing, even though it's open to everybody, and um, I'll, I will definitely continue to do them, but right now I just decided, you know what, you have to get some of these things off your plate. They're stressing you out. And Friday sews is so easy to do that I do it instead sometimes, you know? So th that was kind of the thing I told myself, like, come on, Sammy, be honest. Like your views aren't that great on Friday sews. I'll look at other people's Friday sews like that I watch and they've got, you know, 174 comments and I have, you know, four. <laughs> so I feel like, ah, eh, people don't really care a whole lot about these. So I'll let this go for now. I'd much rather record tutorials. And I think you guys like the, would rather have those than Friday sews, right? You know, you were here, you know what I sewed. And that's the other thing. I feel like they're really redundant. Like, I feel like you're all like, yeah, we know we were there. You know, I have this loop of hair here. I can feel it. It's because my glasses hurt my ear so much that I tuck hair behind my ear to put my glasses on too. I know I need to get that fixed. Trust me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just putting the, my pins in a few places. I can't quite, I'm hoping I've got my um, width, so my edge. All right, now let's do it. Why is my machine down? Did I step on the pedal once? All right, here we go. So I have my fold going just past that seam, ouch, that I sewed. Now, if you have an, a zigzag, you could do a zigzag and I think that they recommend that you straddle. So I don't even have to worry about, oh, am I landing on the right side, on the outside of the waistband right now because I am on the outside. Even if I fall off on the back, on the inside, it doesn't matter. No one will see it. Now you don't want to get any twisting of your waistband or torque lines, so be careful. And that's why I just did a few pins so that I know those are my non-negotiable spots that I wanna make sure that I, I get to without any uh, tucks or anything. What is it? My hair is doing something weird. Right, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm doing. You know what I've been doing. But I, I know some people are like, oh, I kinda like the like, oh, what book you're reading and stuff like that. But we can talk about that now, you know. Right now, I am reading, uh, I think it's the third or fourth book in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. That series is, it's definitely high fantasy and it took a bit to get into, but I really like it. It's definitely a unique world and I really like some of the characters in it. This is so easy. <laughs> I don't know why it's so easy. <laughs> I think it's just because this fabric is so, it's such a pleasure to sew this um, ripstop. It really behaves. 
Something was just poking me on here. Oh yeah, there's a little like plastic thing there. Sheesh. So one of the things I do to prevent my, my waistband from getting like these diagonal torque lines is I make sure it's straight, but I'm also kind of gently pulling right here when I go. So like I try and make sure all this is nice and relaxed and straight, but like pulling this a little bit so that it's not, because the presser foot's pushing this fabric, right? It wants to push it like this. So if I'm pulling this way, I'm trying to counter that. That's what I'm doing. All right. And I'll show you the, the inside. You can probably see a little bit. Oh, I, I got it on my, my tag there. So here's the inside. So see, look, I didn't fall on perfectly, but it's the inside, right? We don't really care a whole lot about that. So I, feel, I got on here perfectly this section right here. <laughs> That's about it. But on the outside, it looks really nice, see? A little bit ruffly because of the stretch. But I, I admit, like, she is absolutely right. It is such a nice, clean, low-profile finish. The other one's a lot chunkier feeling. So I think if I were to do a jean version of this, because I know some people were thinking about it, now that I've sewn this pair, I would recommend doing your inside waistband with a uh, different fabric that's lighter weight. I think that would be really good. Because it, you know, your elastic, it's a little harder to gather up because of the denim. And let's face it, if someone walked up to me, they could pants me in a second with the, these. And I'm sure these too, but these, these, I think these will feel a little more secure. Nope. All right, let's get the elastic in there. So now you're gonna make this elastic piece about eight inches longer than your waist. And the reason is you need a really long tail. So if you're cutting it kind of close on your elastic, uh, you're gonna have to be really careful. I have plenty, obviously. <laughs> I had to buy this much to get what I needed. I even bought some from Hearts and it didn't arrive. So um, I have a lot of this elastic now. I guess I'll have to make a lot of these. Okay, so now we're going to insert this elastic in here and um, <laughs> you're gonna see my non-recommended way to do this because I don't have a safety pin. I know that's crazy, but I don't have a safety pin. I've scoured my whole office and I know I don't because I used up my last ones to attach tags for um, Sonia Phillips garments. Like I make like a little thing that hangs off the garment that just tells the details of it. So, 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 cause she doesn't know, right? She didn't make it. I'll bet she didn't even unpack those boxes, but that's where my last safety pins went. Um, and I keep meaning to bring some from home. So I'm gonna cut a little slit in my elastic. So this is my, this is what I figured out the other day. I found this bobby pin <laughs> and I'm just gonna stick it through like this. <laughs> this is how I'm gonna do this. This bobby pin goes so good with the, these, ooh. You always pin to, you guys, you use starting with the waistband on the inside. Well, I do, I feel like when you do it to the, pin it to the uh, finish on the outside like I just did, you do find, um, and I do, I do this unconsciously now, so I, sh so I should mention, you do need to stitch pretty close to that edge because if you don't, you can lift up this edge and see your stitching of where you attached the waistband on the first seam. So yeah, you do have to stitch kind of close. Wow, this, oh, this, this elastic is barely gonna fit in here. I don't like that. Oh my gosh, Amy, really? That's amazing. I hope it fits in here. I was pretty, I, I actually felt like I, at one point I was only doing half inch seams because I was a little worried about it. Let's hope. The the bobby pin works okay. There it's really hard to hold on to. So look at this is not very wide right here. It's better here. So that was just me. I didn't sew it very good there. Hi Blair. 
Oh, I'm so glad. Nice to see you. <laughs> They're a good bunch. There's no sewing trolls here. <laughs> yeah, so my, my bobby pin is pretty slippery. <laughs> and I can't make it. I couldn't, like, figure out any way to, like, attach to it. Oh, man. I think I'm just going to have to force a lot through, and then that way... <laughs> right, Leah? Yeah, isn't this great? Oh, man. So the loop turner doesn't work for stuff like this because you can't do a loop turner on a circle. The non-roll is rolling. The non-roll is learning. Everything's fine. Am I there yet? Oh, man. Right, Beverly? A safety pin period would be easier. <laughs> oh, I make strides and then it snaps in there. Oh my gosh, I didn't, okay. <gasps> Wait, oh, I, thought I, I thought it had come off the elastic. I don't think it did. No, it didn't. Whew, I gotta be careful of that. Yeah, this fabric is pretty stiff and crunchy. So if I probably wasn't sewing this live, I will admit I would, I would put the elastic in first. And then I would sew the waistband down. Star. I think I have one, but I think it's at home. You're right, I do. I'm getting there, home stretch, baby. Fingers are cramping. Yeah, exactly, Tammy. That's why uh, make, leaving that long tail, I kind of gave myself that, <laughs> you know? Where is it? Oh my gosh, panic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. I had, could barely get my mic on today because I don't have an edge. I didn't want it to be like right here against my throat. Yeah, exactly, Ray. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. Like it, it is sometimes just easier to do it that way. It, it's not, you know, I think it would scare a lot of people to do that, you know, because it is kind of fiddly. But you, you you get it right the first time, you know? And now I just need to straighten out my elastic. This is why I don't like doing it like this. Non-roll my butt. It always rolls. <laughs> I feel like, I wonder if, oh, oh, it's snapping back in there. Oh no, you don't, buster. This 
is what I did the other day too. Okay. Let's see where it twisted. Because yeah, it's so wide. Just wondering. I've conquered it. I need just to get I need to get it all in there. I don't want to lose my little end. All right. So this is your, like once you have your elastic mostly in there, mostly flat, like not gathered as much as this because it's probably not going to be, it's going to be a lot smoother than this. Then you're probably going to want to turn it, try them on and see. I feel like this is the twist and maybe I shouldn't. Well, it's okay. I'm just straight. There's a little twist right here. That's what I'm straightening right now or, or a fold. Maybe that's what it is. It's just a fold. It's one and a quarter. Yeah, well doing elastic over, like a little narrow elastic hem, like when you're doing it over hem, that is easier. This, like as long as your elastic isn't too uh, tight, meaning say it is something very voluminous, right? Um, and this one isn't, right? If your project isn't very voluminous, then I don't, why do I have all the gathers at this end? It should be, don't you think? Oh, oh I know why. Never mind. Then it, um, it's not too bad. That's why I don't think this one would be very hard because it doesn't stretch that much. You can make it stretch that much, but really the, the, the pants should be kind of skimming. This is a workout, man. There we go. No. <laughs> I want to get more in there. All right, maybe what I'll do is try these on really quick off camera and see where we're at. I want more in there though first. Man, make sure you nail your seam allowance sewing this waistband because this, this is my problem right now. I, I, I got, I'm just too close. The waistband is just too up like the perfect size. You need like, at least an eighth of an inch given there, you know what I mean? All right, let me try these on really quick. Don't look. At least I have a dress on, right? And you're with me still. Ooh, these are going to be nice. Did it go back in there? Oh no, don't go back in there. Okay, these feel really good, you guys. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, one thing I was thinking about is how, remember how I was talking about making a, um, a go bag capsule wardrobe? I was thinking like this pair of pants would be excellent for that. 
Alright. I just want to make sure I don't have them um, have the elastic uh, uh, twisted. Yeah, it is right here, right here. Yeah, right, Tammy? Exactly. And this, like I said, it's a stretch woven, kind of a low rise pant. You don't really need it to. All right, my elastic is not twisted. All right, let's pull out a little bit more here. I'm gonna cut off this. I'm gonna cut off this. So you need to figure out your finished length of your elastic but you need to allow yourself to be able to kind of overlap it enough. So if you're gonna overlap it about this much, which is about a fat half inch, you need a quarter of an inch extra beyond on each end of the finished amount, okay? And then now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a nice, you know, amount of space here. And I'm gonna overlap it flat and I'm just gonna stitch across it a bunch, oh man. Of course my machine came on threaded. Yeah, I think like this, is, so I was, I haven't, I didn't do that. I did pack my go bag and all that. Um, but I think that this is the kind of thing because I remember when my parents evacuated, you know, and my mom had no clothes. It was terrible. Like she had like, like one outfit or something, you know? And, um, but you're, there's a lot of sitting around, sitting around. And then they spent so much time in lines, like for FEMA and just everywhere, just line after line, after line, after line, after line. So I think like if I were in that situation, I know me, I'm not very vain, but I do like to feel, um, comfortable and put together like presentable all the time. Like I dress the same on weekdays as I do on the weekends, you know, like I, I don't really change how I dress. And so I, if I was in that situation, oh, welcome Dizzy. Thanks for subscribing. I would already feel so vulnerable and frustrated and sad and scared, right? All those emotions. I would at least want to not think that I look terrible, you know? Y'all saw my elastic wasn't twisted. Why does it look twisted right now? There it is. I see it. Come on. It's because this goes this way. There we go. <laughs> All right. And these, you know, these would be comfy, you know. You're also not at your own house. See, look at that. My seam allowance was not very good right here, you guys. So be, be better about that part than I was. Whew. That was a workout. Oh, I can't wait to show you these, um, show these to you guys when I'm wearing them. All right, so back here, you can leave this open or you can hand stitch it shut. It's on the inside, we're not gonna worry about it too much. Um, so all that's left is the hems. That's it. So here's the back. Here's the front. Which looked like total dry, like <laughs> pull on pants gathered. <laughs> I think that mine are a little more elastic size than normal. And then here's the party at the bottom. <laughs> Let me do the full screen. And when you're wearing them, the they don't look like elastic. They look like elastic pants in this in this the camera right now, but they really don't when people are wearing them. I like 
welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Lynn. It's it's not um it's not great, but it's it's fixed and it's so much better. It's a lot cooler today. It's like well, it's 89 out there. It's supposed to be really hot, but it's um it's uh looks overcast, but it's smoky. So it's a lot cooler because of that. Yay, those look really nice. And when they're being worn, they're not gonna look like um, gathered pants. They're gonna look like a smooth waistband like that. Right? Like this, they'll look like that. I really wanna edge stitch the top, but I'm not gonna do that. This is all fitting in here nicer now. Look at that. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's doing the little on the inside because of the seam allowance there. They look like scrubs. I know. Like with the elastic in there, they don't look like they do when you're being when they're being worn. We got our peaks and our valleys. Can see our leaf print a little bit. Cool. Not bad, not bad. I think I could live in these. I wanna, um, I really wanna see how the tummy panel works, you know? There's our tummy panel in there. Taming tummies since 2020. <laughs> yeah. Cool, and um, I should have checked the length when I threw them on, huh? I'm gonna check the length before I hem them. But I would probably, I think that there's a pretty generous hem allowance. Oh, it's not gonna be on this piece. It's gonna be on one of the, oh, I have one of them here. One inch hem allowance, Never mind. I thought this was the hem allowance right here, but it's a one inch hem. I didn't even notice it, Tammy. I totally forgot to think about it. I didn't even feel it. They felt really nice. And when I looked in the mirror, um, I was just looking to see where the elastic was at. I didn't even think to look. Um, but they felt better in the back because I raised the rise an inch and I tapered the leg. I do a size 14, a hip down, size 16, hip up, right? So as far as this hem, I mean, you could do a half inch, half inch rolled hem. Like I, I really like filling the hem up with all with fabric. Or you could do fold it a quarter of an inch and then three quarters of an inch and edge stitch that. You could um, overlock it, fold it up a whole inch and top stitch it. There's a few options here. You know, now now that I think about like, I didn't really want to use up this fabric, but if I had more of this and I could have probably done this and not kept it the same direction is I could have lined these. I could have lined just this piece here and it would have been two layers. And then you could have, you could have hem like sewn them together at the bottom. No, you couldn't have done that. Because you, you don't want to sew this piece. You don't want to finish this whole piece and then attach it to the pant because then you're pivoting here at these points and <laughs> none of us want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, Nancy's blind hem machine. That's true. Yeah, the, 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 all the junctures look really nice too. The valleys and the peaks. Well, that one's like a sixteenth of an inch off. But that is the inseam, right? The peak and the valley. Yeah, they don't look like clown pants at all. <laughs> so then I cut out the uh, blue A top in the same fabric. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think that's getting too much? I don't know, I'm trying to trust you guys. <laughs> oh, anyway. All right, so next week, um, let's see, do I have the, Nope, that, that's these pants here. 
before I did my fit changes. Um, where where am I here? Let me see something really quick. I think I have it here. I do. All right, let me go back to that. And let's, you can hear me okay over here, right? And I'm gonna put this, um, this one here. Whoa. Oh, well, up, uh, wait, oh. Why is it so gigantic? All right. Here on, here on, here on. All right. Okay, so. Are you <laughs> right? That's awesome. All right, so this is this uh, month's schedule here and I'm going to, next week, I needed to see, because I couldn't really quite remember what I was doing next week, but I'm going to be doing the refashioning. So a lot of us have sewn enough things to know that we have things that we're not wearing a lot. And I've definitely, like, some things are just too small for me now, or they need pockets, or they need to fix or whatever. I have a huge pile of stuff. Some of it I'm going to fix. Some of it I'm going to refashion. Some of it I might just cut up and turn it back into fabric and just have it in my stash. Um, that's what I'm gonna do next week. And I think that sounds kind of boring in my opinion, but I think it'll actually be more interesting than it sounds because, because each thing's gonna present its own kind of um, problem and solution. Oh good, Beverly, I'm glad to hear it because you guys kind of encouraged me to do it and it's something I just need to do. I was just getting a bigger and bigger pile and I don't want to just donate things because I don't really think some of them, like, I don't know, the context for do the donation isn't isn't there. You know, I think some of it's just like, oh, so would someone really want this? It's so unique. Um, you know, and like I have a jammy top where my mom was like, this top does not work for me. Do you want it? Um, that was another thing. After the fire, she got a lot of free clothing and she was kind of in a, 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 a fog when she got that stuff. Um, and it's not like people give their best stuff. And so some of it wasn't the right size. She's very small and petite. And so she just took things. And so she's like, this doesn't work. And the sleeves got all fuzzy, but the body is okay. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just turn this into a jammy tank top. And I'll just throw it through the cover stitch. So things like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at this. And can I turn it into something else? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think sewing solutions is really how you get good at sewing. I can't say that often enough. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm a little embarrassed by the pile. It's huge. It's a pile on my floor over there. I'm not even going to show you a picture of it. <laughs> All right. And then the next week, I am designing these things called mulch mats. I, I've just had this idea for a while. I'm basically making like quilts that will hold waste fabric that is natural fiber and I'm gonna use it um, like little like mulch in my garden, but the cheesecloth wrapper is gonna keep it together so that I don't have scraps of fabric flying all over my yard, which will keep the water in the ground and, um, and from evaporating and the weeds down. So that's something I'm kind of excited about that because I'm gonna get rid of a huge bin of, of fabric for that. After that, the final week is my three year anniversary here on YouTube. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm about to hit 10,000, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I'm gonna be making the Shiroko, I think that's how you say that, jumpsuit by Darren Doe Patterns. That is sponsored by Hearts. Oh, I forgot to put that on the calendar, I feel bad. Um, Hearts Fabric in Santa Cruz, they've always been really nice to me. And um, this is, it's perfect they're sending us a Deer and Doe because they are very big fans of Deer and Doe. You guys voted for it. Uh, I just said what knit projects, it's knit. So that'll be really awesome. I have no idea, I don't even know what that looks like. If you're new here, you'll learn that I'll sew anything <laughs> except wedding dresses. <laughs> so, right Kate, yeah, tackle your own piles. I think this is a really great, like as a knitter, knitters do this with um, their knitting, but you can unknit something, turn it back into yarn, and it's great. 
with the with sewing it's a little trickier i feel like we are all donating things that aren't really that great to donate or you know our sewing fails they're not going to always fit other people either so you got to be honest about like oh, do I, should i donate this like will it really fit someone I have things like prototypes and things that I have in dog beds. Like I just stuff dog beds with things like that. And I think those will be great in the garden too. So anyway, we'll see. Hopefully you're along for the ride for that stuff. I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do this month because it's my month long anniversary. So, um, and starting in September, we're doing a blazer so along. You have plenty of time to get your, well, you're getting close on time to get everything. I'm going to be doing the cashmere um, Auburn blazer. You can do whatever you want though, or if you don't want to do a blazer, because I know that's a pretty specific project, maybe pick a project that you want to, that feels a little bit like daunting that you've always wanted to do. And it feels a little bit like, can I do that? I think that's a great time to do it because it is a so long for a blazer, but it's also just a so along for, hey, we're going to do this project that is a little bit bigger than usual and um, we'll cheer you on no matter what you're sewing. So the first week in September, I'm going to go over fitting and prototypes and stuff of the blazer. I'm not a blazer expert. I've sewn a few. That's about it. Um, and then um, after that, every Saturday, we're going to sew a little bit on our blazer. So if you want to take on a big project that's not the blazer, this is a great time because you don't have to go, oh my gosh, I got to sew this big project. We're going to chip away at it. October is going to come either way. At the end of it, you'll have this thing done, okay? We'll, we'll probably allow about six to eight weeks for it. I don't know. We're really going to chop it up. So, good. I'm glad, you guys. Yeah, this is kind of a unique calendar. Usually you do a project a week. The refashioning of mulch mats are kind of unique. Um, but, you know, that's what I want to do. So. so, yeah, you have time. You can jump in the blade so long, whatever, whenever. It is very casual. So that's, that's what we have coming down the road here. So that's not my computer. I'm not at my computer. I am, but here we go. <laughs> it ain't easy being green. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys Wednesday for refashioning. Get your piles going. Pull out whatever you're not wearing, what needs fixing, that one thing that has that broken button on it, the pockets that are too small, the ones that needed pockets, the hems that aren't right, the things you're not going to wear ever again. Make your pile. We're going to get rid of it. It's going to feel so good. We're going to go into fall ready to sew new stuff, all right? I'll see you guys. Have a good weekend, all right? Thanks for coming. Thanks for the donations. Thanks for the subscribers, too.